what's going on around the world and in our hometowns. And that someone is us. We are free radio. We are always there. We are broadcasters. Visit wearebroadcasters.com or text radio to 52886 to learn more. Furnished by NAB and this station. The Ice Flyers honor those who have served with their annual Veterans Appreciation Night Saturday, November 9th at 7 p.m. Veterans, active duty, and retired military service members will receive 35% off their entire party with their military ID. This discount is available in person at the box office and online at PensacolaIceFlyers.com slash vet tickets. That's 35% off with military ID at the Ice Flyers Veterans Appreciation Night on Saturday, November 9th at 7 p.m. And ESPN2. I'm going to ask you to finish the sentence. Cancer is, and why? Um, okay. Cancer is a mindless beast. It shows up in the middle of the night, in the middle of your life. My dad is still in contact with my phone, and every time I change a phone or upgrade, I never delete my dad. Because of all the donations, research, and support, mine is one of the lives that's been saved. We need your help. We need money for research. It may not save my life. It may save someone you love. Cancer is universal. Life-changing. Cancer is why I will never give up. Cancer is part of our culture. Cancer is not going to be the ending of my life. It doesn't define me. I believe that they can come up with a cure. I think we're just this close. Cancer is a disease whose days are numbered. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. This week on Football Sunday, it's the battle for New York. If he wasn't embarrassed watching that yesterday, he's the only one. The New York Giants and the New York Jets. There's only one word for it, and that's that the Jets stink. Well, both teams are struggling. A loss to the team they share a stadium with could send their fan base over the edge. Very disappointing. The Giants and Jets. Coverage begins Sunday at noon Eastern on ESPN Radio. Presented by Vivid Seats. You here for the underdogs or the top dogs? The rips or the kicks? The king? We're about to see angry LeBron. Or the new king? Zion could be the number one pop star in the world. AD, KD, CP3, or PG13. From the full 48 to the highlight reel and everything in between. No matter what you're here for, we've got it all this season. Cavs, Wizards at 8 Eastern. Tonight on ESPN. Presented by State Farm. Ball for all. on the Paul Feinbaum Show. Hello, Travis. I believe that you are a great ambassador for the Southeast Conference. And I think that if you continue to tell the truth, that maybe some of these athletic directors around the conference will jump on your bandwagon. And who knows, you may be the SEC commissioner one day. Welcome back to the program. Glad you're here. And Chris is up next. Chris, welcome to the show. Good afternoon. Hey, Paul. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you. I uh, just calling to bend the ear. Um, last time we talked, it was, of course, Jim in Tuscaloosa was giving everybody it's a little bit of redneck a hard time. I'm sure you remember that. I, I do. Yeah. I, but the reason I called today, Paul, is just on you caller you just had that's unbelievable someone of that statue with that kind of coat would even call a radio show or a tv show yeah uh, listen i i must tell you i'm i'm pretty shocked uh, that harvey updike called on this night of all nights um i i've already had all i can possibly say about him uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm dumbfounded. I'm, I'm at a loss for words that uh, he did what he did uh, and, and did it yeah. with. Uh, but again, why, why should anyone, uh, including myself, be surprised by, by anything Harvey Updike does? You know, uh, I was sitting there thinking. I was like, while you're taking this show, you got to sit there and talk to this fool. And for words, you could have none. 
you know, for someone that can't call. Well, I mean, just, unfortunately, unfortunately for Harvey Updike, uh, the only worthwhile uh, notation in his life, uh, I mean, not worthwhile, but the only thing he's ever done in his life that, that anyone cared about uh, is, is poison those trees, and he can't let it go. He thinks, he thinks that's something noteworthy. Uh, instead, it's embarrassing. The guy's a disgrace to mankind. We're back with one more hour. You're in charge of hiring and Indeed has solutions like online skills tests, which let a candidate show that they're the right hire. We'll also have a dolphin chatter excitedly in front of the perfect candidate. Okay, there's no dolphin. But skills tests, that's a for sure. See why independent research by Silk Road shows Indeed delivers three times more hires than any other job site. Visit Indeed.com slash promo today and get a free sponsored job upgrade on your first posting. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Ordering online? Just click and your purchase appears at your doorstep. But the vehicles that move your order, trucks, jets, and ships, create a lot of greenhouse gas emissions. That's why ExxonMobil and Synthetic Genomics are developing algae biofuels that can reduce emissions from all those trucks, jets, and ships by half. The upshot? A future where your deliveries are just as convenient and greener. Learn more at energyfactor.com. You're listening to Pensacola's local and ESPN sports station. Your favorite ESPN radio shows, plus high school and UWF Argo football. ESPN Pensacola, 1330. Prescription products require an online physician consultation and are only available if the physician determines a prescription is appropriate. See website for full details and safety information. One of the scariest things that can happen to a guy is that first morning you wake up, you look in the mirror, and you start to realize you're going thin up top. Two out of every three guys are going to start losing their hair by the age of 35. 35? You're still a young dude at that point. You're going to start losing your hair? Then think about it. A year from now, it's all gone. And everybody used to think as soon as you start losing your hair, that's it. It's genetics. It's father time. And there's nothing you can do about it. Well, guess what? That's wrong. 4 is a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. Prescription solutions backed by science, written by a doctor, and delivered to your door. Thanks to science, baldness can be optional. Go to 4 slash ESPN right now and get started for just five bucks while supplies last. This would cost hundreds if you went to the doctor or a pharmacy. So go to 4 slash ESPN. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash ESPN. 4 slash ESPN. Hey, it's Flint Lockwood here from Swallow Falls. My friends and I have just discovered these amazing living foodimals. But wait, we've also discovered a crisis that needs our help. According to my calculations, one in five kids in America struggles with hunger. That's almost 17 million kids. Our mission is to help solve hunger by teaming up with the Feeding America Network to get food to kids facing hunger in communities across the country. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks, helping connect children and families who face hunger to billions of pounds of food, reaching shelters, schools, and community centers in every county in America, including yours. Help Flint and the Feeding America network of food banks get food to the people who need it in your community. Find your local Feeding America food bank at feedingamerica.org hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. A message from Feeding America and the Ad Council. Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. How about we add Sunday to that list? It's the NFL Tailgate Show at World of Beer. Your plans just changed. Yes, they did. Live show, games, prizes, NFL legends. 500 bottles of beer on the wall. And you can try them all. And no wrong choices. Well, trying all 500 week one, that could be a bad choice. World of Beer. Beer as you have never experienced it before. Come on, bro. That was my tag. Your NFL party awaits you at World of Beer. World of Beer. Really? Football is here. Catch all the UWF Argos games and the big NFL games every Saturday and Sunday on Pensacola's home for hometown sports. ESPN Pensacola, 1330 AM, 991 FM. If you would like to be a part of ESPN Pensacola as a sponsor or promotional partner, just give us a call at 262-6000 or visit our website at ESPNPensacola.com. ESPN Pensacola, 1330 AM, 991 FM, WEBY, Milton, Pensacola. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen.
Today on the Sports Drive, we're going to talk a little high school football. Brian Ahatz will join us at the PNJ. I guess there's a big game in college football we're going to talk about. Yes, it's your Ducks. And we'll talk some more on UCF. Get ready, boys, tonight, Friday, if you even knew that exists. Has just become the NFL's all-time leading rusher. Across the middle, and it's caught for the first. It's Baldwin shaking free and sprinting down the sideline for the touchdown. It's third of the day. And this time, his name is Bubba. Bubba scores on a 34-yard touchdown run by the Dope Walker Award winner, Trent Richardson, who broke a lot of Emmett Smith's records back in Pensacola, Florida. And welcome to the Sports Drive right here on ESPN Pensacola, 1330 AM, 99.1 FM. I am Chad Brilliante. Glad to be here having some fun. Everybody is so pumped because, yeah, there's big high school games in the playoffs. And, you know, you got games like I think LSU and Alabama are playing tonight. I think that's – or this weekend. Uh, UWF's playing the number one team in Division II football. But, uh, None of man, it matters. None of it matters because everybody, like me, I think everybody's getting excited as UCF is taking on Tulsa. And stop. We're done talking about UCF for the day. Let's move on and talk some high school football. And right out of the gate, Eric Vadreen and Jeff Price joining us. We'll get to all those games and more. Jeff is on a uh, on a streak, the hot streak. Whoop, whoop. That is five consecutive days with Oregon Duck gear. I like it. Uh, hey, look, you got to ride it. They lose a couple games, you know, you'll probably not see that hat. Uh, let's talk a little high school football, and he is the man. You try to beat him, but you cannot. And we're talking about in picks. Don't actually physically assault him. Brian Ahatz joins us of the Pensacola News Journal. Does a great job of covering all the games. And uh, right out of the gate on a day where we have six teams getting set to go. Already teams this morning having their pep rallies, making their trip like Washington. Pine Forest and Escambia will host home games. Northview and Jay will battle it out. And then you have the Pensacola Catholic Crusaders with a bye. Brian covers all of it. He knows these guys like friends. Brian, what's happening, my friend? Hey, man, I got that. I uh, just took the thermometer out, man. I got that Friday night fever, you know. So I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm great, man. Can't complain. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting one. Now, we talked a little on Coach K the other day, but uh, you've got a lot of good teams in the area. But what team to you has the best chance? And it might not be because they're the best team, but it might be because of home field advantage or based on their system or their competition this year. Uh, who do you feel has the best chance uh, to get to the state finals out of the six teams out there? I'll tell you what, man. If you – if you uh anybody listening if you if you keep up with football around here a little bit or a lot or um somewhere in between if you if you can't get fired up about this postseason um then then you never will because i'm telling you this 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 year um it really is something special in the works i i can honestly say i see three teams um with with a good shot of of reaching that state championship game and uh and definitely making a, a good run if they don't make it quite that far. Um, I will, of course, you got to bring up Escambia and Pensacola Catholic. Both uh, earn number one seeds in their respective regions, Catholic in, in 3A, uh, Region 1, 3A, and Escambia in 1, 6A. Um, so both of those teams will be playing. Potentially, they, they, they will play at home um, through the regional final or the Elite Eight, if you will, and uh, potentially even hosting that state semifinal game. So with the home field advantage and the way that those teams have been playing all year, of course, both undefeated 
uh, heading into the postseason. I think both of those two teams have a great chance. When you look at the bracket, I think Pine Forest in, in 5A has a good shot of, of making it to the state championship game. And Northview and Jay are, are two uh, two pretty strong 1A teams. Northview is the favorite, uh, played Baker very close in the regular season, and that would be the team that would uh, they would most likely meet in the regional final to, to make it to the state semifinal game. So um, I, I think – I think even Northview is a team that we could be talking about for, for several weeks. So I hate to sound maybe like a homer or just, you know, looking through the uh, looking at the world through rose-colored lenses, but that's the way it is right now. These, this, this has the uh, makings of what could be uh, a, a banner year for the postseason in the Pensacola area. Brian, are there any guys out there? There's going to be a couple. I told the story earlier today, not on air, but I was in, in Las Vegas where people surprisingly have other things to, to go do than watch minor league baseball when I was calling it out there. Shocking. They, things that like the Bellagio and other things. But when we were out there, I remember uh, talking to a couple people because there was this one kid, and he was just five-star kind of guy, a prospects. Everybody wanted him. Uh, UNLV was looking, but they weren't out dueling teams in the SEC. So I wore my uh, Florida Gator, I had a Florida Gator vest, and I had it out there. And people at the age, I guess I, at that point, kept myself in shape and looked like a, sort of a human being. And uh, people out there thought I was a scout. So people were walking up, and they were shaking my hand like, good to see you, good luck today, because I had the, the Florida Gator sweater vest with a pair of jeans, and I had a little sheet of paper in my hand, so they thought I was scouting the kid. And uh, everybody treated me nice. I got four nachos out of it. But uh, I'm telling you, it, if you look at this week, there's going to be a lot of a lot of scouts out there because now we're into the playoffs. Now is when we start looking at the kids and and really start focusing in. Hey, Florida State, maybe they'll, they'll scout a player and a coach. But you look right now at some of the kids out there. We knew the Jacob Copelands. We knew the big names in the past, even Gerald Bright going back, and guys that we've seen uh, throughout the years from Demarius Randall, even da- dating back to Pensacola. And, and Pensacola High School. Is there any guy right now that you see that people will be watching from our local teams as that's the guy to watch for? I got I got a couple guys I can mention. First, I want to ask you real quick. When you said you got four nachos, was that four servings of, of plates of nachos or was that four individual nacho chips the, that were that were donated to you? The, the moment where I said I sort of kept myself looking okay, that was the moment it all went downhill. <laughs> it, yeah. it was all four right, it was four right. total nachos. No, no, four plates, please. I, four plates. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, okay. I just wanted to I wanted to clear that Nothing up. fun oh, about okay. four chips. That's not that would just hey, annoy hey, me. Hey. That would be annoying, yeah. That's right. All right, well hey let me get let me get back to answering your question. I think I think the guy with the uh a couple guys with a lot of recruiting clout right now. Uh, run, Frank Pizant, the running back at Escambia High School, he's also recruited as a, uh, of course, as a running back when he's played the last two seasons, including this season. Uh, as a sophomore, though, he was an all-state linebacker, and uh, so he's a guy that that uh, recruiting uh, college coaches see. You know, he can play uh, either both sides of the ball. Uh, some see him as a linebacker, some see him as a running back. He's a I think a three- or four-star recruit. He's currently committed to Middle Tennessee State. Uh, he does have some, some offers uh, from Power 5 programs, too. So it'll be interesting to see how that all shakes out for him. And uh, you mentioned, yeah, a lot of college coaches coming around. Um, I saw that, uh, I believe it's Terrell Buckley from Mississippi State, the defensive back coach. Um, I, I, he, he tweeted that he was in the, the uh, 850. So I don't know if, if he's going to pop up at some games tonight. That would be interesting, but... Um, another guy that that uh, got a lot of, a lot of uh, recruiting looks is Demarius McGee, the junior at Catholic High. Uh, he's, I mean, he's got the frame. He he, he can play. He, he's a kick returner, but uh, he can he's a defensive back primarily. But he can return kicks. He can play receiver. He can play uh, quarterback in that in that kind of that pistol wing T wishbone whatever Catholic got going on over there. He, he he's 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 a great athlete. He's got offers from Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Tennessee. Um, Frank, so Frank Pizant and uh, uh, Demarius McGee come to mind as far as teams that are uh, players on teams that are, are alive in the postseason. But you got to mention Marquise Robinson at Milton. They just Milton narrowly missed the postseason, but that guy, the defensive tackle, six three, three hundred, running about a five flat forty. Um, and he's only a junior, and he's got, you know, when you start off with offers from uh, Auburn, Alabama, Ohio State, Georgia, 
uh, that that only you know that kid as long as he stays on the path he's on he's going to be able to sign just about wherever he wants. So though he, we won't see him on the uh, in, playing in the postseason, but he's going to be uh, a force and a, a hot commodity in the recruiting world uh, moving ahead. And there's there's a, there's a handful of guys. I mean, two stars and, and even guys that are a little bit under the radar with with a handful of offers. You uh, to mention a guy from Pine Forest too. I like uh, DeCarian McWilliams. He's a UAB commit. Got about seven uh, N- uh, D1 mid-major offers, and uh, he's a very exciting player. He's got eight picks, and I think he's brought four or five of them back to the house. Um, and then w- looking at Washington, um, I-, I like their they, – they, I like some of their defensive linemen. Amari Severson's out for the year with a knee injury. He's a senior, but he does have offers from Louisville, and UCF, um, and I, I think he, you know, it's terrible to see him go down with that knee injury, but I think he's the type of kid that only gets stronger from it and, and ends up signing with a with a big time program. So uh, I, I I think uh, I think it's a it's a it's a pretty strong year for recruiting. There's like you said, there's not quite that Jacob Copeland guy out there, but there's a there's some there's some promising prospects and. The teams as a whole, like I said earlier, I mean, it's looking it's looking like it could be a pretty pretty uh, snazzy postseason around here. Well, Brian, I know it's a busy night for you, and we always appreciate the time. I've, I've seen you on the videos on Twitter driving a golf cart, and that's insanity. So I'm not going to say where you're driving, but is are, are you going on the, the AHATS caravan to any of these games, or are you staying local until uh, one of the local teams is out? Um, what you, I'm sorry, I, I got confused there. You're saying, I, of course I'm going to a game tonight. Are you well, no, 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 I'm talking about if if once, let's say, like tonight we got a Scambia and Pine Forest and then Northview and Jay, the game going on, but once the teams, as we continue, if the teams, let's say, and I know a Scambia has a chance to almost host every game, but let's say one of the teams is right. eliminated, are you heading on the road to cover the teams as well, wherever they're at? If, every, oh, if the local yeah, team's yeah. gone. Yeah, 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 well... Um, if, if if in the event that the local teams are all wiped out, I would imagine that I would um, head on over to the, the Class 1A through 4A state championships will be in Tallahassee. And I think um, I would they would uh, have uh, us guys from the PNJ, um, we, we would cover some of those games, I would imagine, and, and help out some of the, the other Gannett papers in the state that might have some teams from South Florida coming up to those games. So I would uh, – I would imagine that in the event that, that the Pensacola area teams get wiped out, uh, my, my football season won't be over in high school, and I'll, I'm going uh, to keep uh, juicing this thing to the last drop for sure. So, it's, uh, <laughs> but, but, hey, like I said, man, I, I got a feeling that we're going to be talking some, some home playoff games for a few weeks. But like you said, you never know. You, never, you do never know. So, uh, but, but I am really intrigued about them moving the state championships to – Tallahassee for 1A through 4A, and then, of course, uh, 5A through 8A will be in Daytona Beach. So, we'll, hey, that's the life of a sports reporter, man, especially this time. You, you can't make Thanksgiving plans. You you can't uh, – you, you don't know what's going to be going on at that time, and, and I love it that way, and, and uh, you just read and react, you know. Sometimes you Omaha at the line of scrimmage, you know, <laughs> on, on a Wednesday, and, and uh, you make it a great weekend. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I read in between the lines, too, that if anybody from the PNJ was listening, uh, Brian, the company card uh, will be used for gas mileage and anything for these trips. Uh, I will co- I will promote that as well because it sounds like well, you need to cover the game. Honestly, to tell you the truth, in this area, you know Brian, and we've got Jeff Price is in here. He does the games with WFGX, does a great job as well. Uh, you know, Eric has done a number of uh, co-hosting jobs with us throughout the years. Uh, we It's a tight-knit group of us that cover sports in this area. Obviously, Shugard beats us with the mustache, but when it comes down to it, you know, we have to all, like, a lot of the news I get on high school sports is stuff that I read from you in the paper so you know and and that's I would hope at this point that uh you know you're going to the game because I want to be able to wake up the next day and be able to report on the game so (laughs) I got you man it's like an hour you you know I'm I'm gonna be at Pine Forest tonight and uh Eric Wallace my colleague will be uh covering the North UJ tilt and then we got the retired award-winning columnist Bill Valona Hopping That's in, awesome, yeah. coming off the bench, dropping big buckets. Uh, he'll be at a Scambia, so um, you can you can follow. <coughs> excuse me, you can follow each of us on Twitter. I'll be giving the live updates from uh, Pine Forest at PNJ Brian, 
at Ewall14 will be your guy for the North UJ tilt. And at Bill Valona PNJ will be the man uh, with the Gators against New Smyrna Beach. And uh, we'll, uh, we're, we're, we're going to be keeping tabs on Washington over there in uh, mainland, um, too. You know, of course, these games all kick off at 730. But uh, Washington will be kicking off at 630 local time over there in the they're, they're playing in the Eastern time zone. So we'll uh, have some updates on that coming in uh, about an hour and 15 minutes. That won't kick off. So. Um, we're, we're ready, man. We're ready to rock. And well, it's like you said, it's a tight knit group. It's a lot of fun, and I'm, you know, we all help each other out, man. I'm pumped. Uh, it's going to be fun tonight, and uh, looking forward to all the games. And Brian, it's going to be an exciting time with so many teams getting the opportunity. Yep. Hey, I can't argue with that one. That's that's for sure. <laughs> all right, real quickly, uh, Nick Foles, uh, it come back in full force like the guy that won the Super Bowl that gave me tears that night. Yeah, well, you know, they they got a bye week this week, but Nick Foles is QB1 over there in Duval. So, um, I think, you know, that's, that's a, that was a tough decision to make. I mean, Minshew looked pretty good uh, for most of the games. He did not look good in London. He did not look too sharp against the Saints in a home game about three or four weeks ago. But other than that, the kid played pretty good, man. And uh, he's, he's such a competitor. I know that was tough for him probably to – to be uh, to learn he's back to QB too, but I mean Foles really he's only got one highlight on the year as a Jaguar because he you know on his first drive the first touchdown of the year he throws a beautiful ball to, to DJ Shark and you know he had that collarbone injury on the same play and I think I think uh, Doug Marone and, and the, the Jaguars are um, you know they want to see what 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 they they haven't they haven't been able to see as much as they wanted to yet from Nick Foles and they know Minshew's you know, if if, uh, if, it, if Nick Foles is, doesn't come as advertised, I mean, you got a you got a hungry guy in Gardner Minshew that'll be ready to to get uh, to get right back in there and, and start shaking things up. But it's it's Foles, man. It's Foles. Uh, it's Foles now. We got the bye week, and, and we'll see some Nick Foles uh, two Sundays from now. Yeah, hey, look, they've got a shot. The uh, the AFC is pretty open. Uh, outside of one great team, but uh, hey, I'm I'm looking forward to uh, to talking some uh, high school football with you throughout the next couple of weeks. Getting set to go here for the uh, for the championship, and hopefully all, all the teams continue to win. They got some uh, teams like Escambia and Pensacola Catholic got some pretty good paths, especially Catholic getting the bye this week. So Brian, I know you guys are busy this week, so uh, get back out there in the cold weather. We're we're gonna enjoy this heat in, inside and uh, <laughs> have have a good one, my friend. Hey, I sure appreciate it, man. You enjoy it, too. I, I, always good talking to you. Good talking to you, too, Brian. All right. Brian Ahots, the Pensacola News Journal. Uh, he'll be busy tonight, like he said. Also, Eric Wallace well, uh, doing a great job covering all the uh, all the games. And then Bill Valona as well, who's been out there with the Pensacola Blue Wahoos this year, but uh, also a contributor, you know, coming through. Uh, Bill's a Hall of Famer. He, if he shows up on the field, they're, they're going to give him a pen, a paper, and say, right, my friend. Like one of those old movies, right. Write your story, Bill. That sounded disgusting. We're coming back for more right here. It's the Sports Drive. We're going to talk some college football, LSU, and Alabama week. Woo! Having some fun as uh, the president will be there. We're also going to get to more on some of the other big games. I'm sticking with my pick. It's only been one day. I didn't wake up, uh, even though last night it, you know, the brain might have got blurry. It's still one pick. The Golden Gophers, folks. Don't run to Vegas to do it. <laughs> Just flipped a coin. We're coming back for more right here. It's UCF night, Tulsa. Everybody get excited. I'm Troy Rafferty, and many of you know about my love for sports and my longtime support for our local high school athletes. One thing these fine young people have taught me over the years is this. Whether it's on the ball field, in the classroom, or in a court of law, always work your hardest and achieve the best results possible. And that is the commitment we make to our clients and our community. Levin Papantonio in Pensacola since 1955. Hello sports fans, Miles Bentley here, General Manager at Hill Kelly Dodge Crusher Jeep Ram in Pensacola. Growing up, I always loved sports. Nothing but net, out of the park, through the uprights. Sink the puck, Bentley, that was me. But my love of the game couldn't beat my love for Pensacola and helping folks get on the road of dreams in a new Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. Sure, I never went to the big leagues in sport, but we're all pro here at Hill Kelly Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. Proud to be in Pensacola.
Building a winning team is all about finding the right people for the job. That's why college scouts all over the country spend so much time recruiting players they need on the field. They look for the right people with the right skill sets to have success. And when it comes to hiring for your business, there's no better place and no better tool than LinkedIn. Over 600 million members visit LinkedIn to make connections, learn and grow as professionals, and discover new job opportunities. That's how they make sure your job post gets in front of people with the right hard skills and soft skills to meet your role requirements. Things like collaboration, work ethic, and adaptability. LinkedIn does the legwork to match you to the most qualified candidates so you can focus Focus on hiring the person who will transform your business. And companies who use LinkedIn to hire rank LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality candidates. To get $50 off your first job post, go to LinkedIn.com slash sports. That's LinkedIn.com slash sports to get $50 off your first job post. LinkedIn.com slash sports. Terms and conditions apply. Regions wants to know, what's a financial tip you'd give your younger self? Retirement is the best form of self-care. Regions believes banking on your own terms is a big deal. Maybe you value great service and convenient solutions, or you simply want a banker that gets your priorities. Take control of your finances with the kind of financial clarity your younger self could only dream of. There's no shame in showing up just for the free food. Because some things are bigger than banking. Switch for good at regions.com slash bigger than banking. Regions, official bank of the SEC. Member FDIC. Hello, everybody. You're looking live at Fansville, a college football utopia. Fansville. Where the rivers flow with ice-cold Dr. Pepper. Delicious. Where every day is Saturday and everyone's a fan, even babies. Fan babies. And the seasons never change because the only season is college football season. Get a taste of Fansville this fall during a college football game near you. Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Grab some today. The Paul Feinbaum Show. Everything you wanted to happen oh. hasn't happened. Oh, my gosh. That's all any of y'all want to talk about is Alabama. You're really not understanding the conversation, but anyway, we can move on. Alabama's dynasty has just begun. Hold on a second, Charles. Somebody wants to talk to you. I don't want to talk that compelling moron. He's nothing but a lame-haired old man. 2 till 5 every weekday afternoon. ESPN Pensacola, 1330 AM, 99.1 FM. You're out of your freaking mind, cow turd. You're listening to Pensacola's local and ESPN Sports Station. Your favorite ESPN radio shows, plus high school and UWF Argo football. ESPN Pensacola, 1330. We're going to skate to one song, one song only. And welcome back to the Sports Drive right here on ESPN Pensacola, 1330 AM, 99.1 FM. Simulcast on Blab TV, Chad Brillante, Eric Vadrine, Jeff Price. Thanks again to Ron Odds of Pensacola News Journal. Six local teams will get set for their playoff run here today, and it should be some fun. Uh, your sports quote of the day goes to the late Pedro Guerrero. Enjoyed watching him when he was a St. Louis Cardinal, L.A. Dodger back in the day. I was not alive for that in the 70s. But uh, Pedro said, I am sick of everybody reporting what I say and not what I think. <laughs> so there's nice. your sports quote of the day right there. Quit reporting what I say and dang it, report what I think. You know, I just wish more people, nobody actually wants to report what guys are thinking. I want to make that clear. No matter who it is, you would either end up uh, on the streets, jail, fired. divorced. <laughs> when guys are thinking, you don't want to know all the time. Yep. It, it's a good thing to have, you know, like a, you know, People would be toying with people all the time. That's all I'm going to say. Looking at uh, the situation right now with uh, what's going on in college football, we talked a little bit about um, you know Chase Young and the situation at Maryland. But this story, it doesn't seem like there's a ton to it. It seems like, you know what, he, he accepted a loan from a family friend. He said he repaid it. They're holding him out this game. But there's not a ton more to this story. You know, it, that's the thing is, the NCAA violations are very similar to picking up a PGA Tour rule book. It's not fun, meaning that, you know, it is not fun to go out through there and, and look through the different games and uh, try to, you know, it, it, it's not fun at all. So at the end of the day, if you are somebody that is looking at Chase Young's situation, and Eric, you made it clear, you know, Joe Ford as a big Ohio State fan – Losing him to Maryland, that's not that big of a deal. You're, you should be able to win this game running a wildcat with the punter. But the difference is, in, in this matchup, 
Chase Young for the longevity. If they're going to play Penn State or if they're going to go on to the Big Ten Championship or to the national title, which they have a legit shot as the number one seed right now in the playoff, you need this guy. He's a beast. I mean, he's the best player in college football athletic-wise. Outside of a quarterback position, he's the best player in college football. And he's going to possibly, you know, depending on the team, he's the number one prospect. He's not going to go number one because somebody's going to snag a quarterback. But he's the number one prospect right now. Do you guys see any more baggage to this story? Because I, I, I see this, you know, he no, pretty much I mean, has come out. He, he let everybody know. They're handling it in-house, and uh, he'll miss the game against Maryland. It, more so than anything, it's actually quite annoying because it seems like every single year someone's going to fall victim to something stupid like this, and it's never the third-string quarterback. It's never the walk-on or anything like that. They specifically target high-profile players to make – some sort of mockery or some kind of defamation about their character to where it hurts them in the long run. I, I don't like it whatsoever. I think there's nothing to it. I mean, first things first, every single person in this building has borrowed money at some point, whether it's just something small like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that this register only took cash. Can I, can I get $10 from you and I pay back? Whatever the case is. Like, honestly, it's one of those situations. If anything, I would look upon it as hey, he has pretty good credit, so that's actually a positive as opposed to a yeah. negative. So I just hate that they always find a way to go after a high-profile player over something that's really nothing serious. I think it would show more of his character that he didn't pay it back, if you want to be honest. Yeah. So, I mean, why is this even a story? And well, I think they I, I understand it. what you're saying with the yeah. the, 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 the money taking cash, though. But the, the first off, the company has to be open for the register to take cash. I know your story you're talking about there. There has to be somebody, a customer service person working. It's not going to open for – that's called stealing. You can't take the money out there without yeah. – Oh, okay. Oh, you were talking about oh, – Oh, geez. I see what you're saying. I see yeah. what, I understand you ever go to a place and they're like, sorry, our yeah. computer's down, we're only taking cash? I don't carry cash because for where I grew up, so I'm not going to carry cash because I know what happens. I'm done swiping but, the swipe your owns at Walmart and all. Oh, we're done yeah. here. Because every – bananas – Proof of purchase, age. I'm like, it's a freaking banana. What do kids do with bananas these days? Like, uh, I don't, don't want to know. No, I do not want to answer that. Now that I'm thinking of that, that is not. But everything, you know, it, it becomes something that people can use. Like, Teddy Ruxpin. Like, are you over the age of 30? Well, like, why do I have to even be over four to buy this? Like, nobody outside. I, I got, I've got. i been shopping for a lot of rat traps and cold medicine. That's been my life. Like, How's that going for you, by the way? It's not cool. So, But every time, it, this is at 1, p, 1 a.m., and... Anything with rat poison and anything with cold medicine are two things that you get confirmations on. So, like, I swipe them, and they're like, we will get an attendant for you. Yeah, and then attendant's red. in the back, walking, it has a bad hip, and just comes, like, swiveling in there. And I'm watching them on, on row 29, and I'm like, are you kidding me, man? Like, these rats are now eating through my walls. Like, can we get, can we get these traps, and can we get, like, all this stuff... It just is uh, you know, no, done with those. And unless there's not an attendant there, we're, we're done with the swipe. Well, I, I, I think the probably the best part is just picturing you at 1 a.m. chasing rats around with the traps, drinking that, cold medicine. Yeah. That was his time. Jared Hawker pick with those rats, actually. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, me, me and Jamarcus Russell, we were hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Upset. Okay, so Jeff, uh, to the point uh, with, with Chase Young, though, do you see, you know, no, I, and, does he have a legit shot at the Heisman, too, if he comes back? Not even after missing one week? I don't know. Missing a week is going to hurt, but he's still a, a. I say that if he goes out in the playoffs and then say they make the playoffs and everything like that, and he goes, you know, whatever. Well, let me say the Big Ten championship will be huge. If he shows out in that game, he's got a legit shot. Mm -hmm. I just don't think he's going to do and be able to do enough to catch the guys like Tua and Joe Burrow and all these. Well, other what guys. did Joe Burrow and and Tua go to shake hands and they like pull a Benny Hill like moment and whoo, like both slip. Together at the same yeah, time. Both you know. <laughs> but, but I think for, for I think Chase, he's getting invited regardless. I think he's getting absolutely, invited. Absolutely, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think for him, it but was... But he's going to need a loan to get there to New York. Oh, well, he ain't making that yeah, mistake twice. <laughs> but I think it was important for him to come out and, and immediately uh, you know, tell everybody what happened and what it was about. I thought before. he handled this very professionally. And I'm sure somebody was there behind him going, hey, you need to do this right now before this becomes a bigger story because the longer he doesn't approach it, now people are in the media are like, oh, let's throw this out there. Oh, let's throw this out there. When he tweeted that and posted that, I'm sure all these media people were like, dang it. Dang it, we should have posted a story about him just a little bit sooner <laughs> about him stealing from that old lady. And, and that's the what story it was. looks a lot kinder. I'm just saying this, and it's completely ancillary. It has nothing to do with anything. But it looks like a kinder story that it's Ryan Day's Ohio State, not Urban Meyer. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though it could be completely, uh, like, nothing to do with Herb, if this was a Urban Meyer coach team and this story's coming out, you're like, 
here we go again. But you know, it like be a worse story then? <laughs> like it would be a worse story. It really was an Urban Meyer story based on it was 2018. But but um, what I'm saying is if he was there, yeah. the baggage would just be. The smoke's That's gone. what we do, yeah. Uh, Jameis Winston BB guns. You're like, yeah, like crab legs. It had nothing to do with what was going on. But like, remember he shot a BB gun at kids? Like, okay, I did that at uh, Steak and Shake one time. And, all right. Thanks for bringing that up, Chad. Yeah. Eric, uh, looking at Deion Sanders, let's go to your school here as we – Move around the table of hate. That's what it seems like today with Chase yeah. Young and all this stuff. Hate, hate, hate the haters ball from from a Chappelle show. Dion, uh, look, Florida State is uh, the rest of the country right now is sort of sitting back and laughing at the way this is being handled because Florida I'm State was, uh, and a lot of it has to do with the media. And uh, I'm calling it the stoop stoop, maybe because I was by some. And I, I'll always say these are some good sources, but I'm not the only one. You had newspapers and you also had TV companies coming out. Early in the morning, Stoops being announced, or at least he's the front runner. And all I said was, look, I'm hearing word he's the, the top candidate, and it looks like they're going to sign him. I didn't say this is the time they are signing him. It, it, I'm telling you, though, Deion Sanders from a hype video is cool, but an actual head football coach with a team trying to build, this is not going to be a long-term situation. It would be fun for a week with videos and all over ESPN. He's a nice guy. There's nobody better to walk into your house than primetime, probably, to get you to be like, oh, shoot, man. Like, every kid or every dad's like, man, you better go home with it. If you don't play for this guy, man, did you see him running back there for the Cowboys and all that? Like, everything he's about. But as a head coach, an actual coach, unless he fills his team with just, if he's just straight like a poster child, like with Bill Schneider walking with jazz music as the other guys coach around him the last couple years, unless that's the case, then there is no reason for this move. And I hope it's just... False advertising. It has to be false advertisement. I mean, as a Florida State guy, I'm kind of embarrassed with the way that they're going in the direction of the program. So, like, for me, I, I don't necessarily see why they view it as the, the, the guy that you need to go talk to for this position. Now, I'm all for if you want to add him as a position coach or something like that. That would definitely put butts in seats. It's definitely going to be good for recruiting those visits and things like that because a lot of times people don't realize when you go to these recruiting trips and these official visits, your families are there. And whenever you have a dad who followed Deion Sanders' career, he's going to be like, son, are you aware as to who you just shook your hands with? So it's definitely going to carry some weight in that department. But if you're trying to bring him in as a head coach, I don't necessarily be in a, a, a good fit, needless to say, because he doesn't necessarily have the credentials. They already made that mistake with Willie Taggart. And honestly, I'm just saying this from a recruiting standpoint. If Deion Sanders is the head coach, Florida State has taken a backseat to a lot of schools in the state of Florida. And I would say if he was the head coach, Florida State is going behind your UCF Knights and right behind Florida. They're not going to be one of those schools that you want to go to if you're a recruit in the state of Florida, which is producing top-tier talent. It's such a big, big state. So there's no way that you can make this decision and expect to contend for ACC championships for years to come. If they did that, they would literally be a mockery, and they're probably looking at the fourth best school in the state of Florida. So it's definitely a step backwards. Jeff, the only way this works out is if they do, you know, we've seen co-coordinators, but if you did co-coaches, and what it is is strictly Dion has all the money in the world. He has chains that are have more money. He has rims on golf carts that are more than all three of us have ever made combined. He has a I restaurant mean, he, in Tallahassee, yeah, too. He's doing great. So Dion doesn't need that. So with all that being said, if you start looking into the, uh, with, with everything going on, I think you start to look and, and, and you realize that for everybody who is a college football fan, you sort of have to sit back and go, okay, you know what? If he was the like the face of walking in and recruiting, but then you had a real coach alongside of him. Like, like he'd just sit on the sidelines like, uh-huh, like listen to that pump-up music yeah. and stuff. That maybe could work, but we're going down a slippery slope anyway. Yeah, you're talking about him wearing the wearing the headset like you think the coaches <laughs> would, but then he's got music bumping yeah, in Yeah, exactly. Like, no, and, and the thing is, is remember, he's an offensive coordinator at his uh, the high school where his son goes to a pretty Trinity. funny story anyway with that. Yeah. yeah, which I told you, you know, they, they show some of the games on ESPN, and one of them they were at halftime, and the, they're interviewing the head coach. Asking him, you know, how are things going? You know, what do you see here? And Dion just walks up and kind of takes mm-hmm. over, and the coach is like, "All right, whatever." And then after the game, you know, they win, whatever, and then they're talking to the coach, "Hey, you know, you did a great job. You know, hey, walk us through how you pulled that off today." And he just walks up, just kind of takes over, and he's like, "Yeah, my boys did a good job." You know, whatever. And the coach just kind of throws his hands up and walks away. You know, and that right there, that he, you talk about the recruiting aspect of it. Yeah, he would probably be cool. Like, he'd probably have fireworks at your house, inside your house, yeah. going off like, yeah, I'm prime time, you know, all this other stuff. 
And then you got to come to the realization of, well, you still got to have a coach. You know, and do you really want this guy to lead a university? You know, maybe a high school, that's cool. He's an offensive coordinator. He's not a head coach at the high school. That's all well and good. But do you see him running a four-year, absolutely amazing university that has all the tradition and has ability to get all the talent in the state of Florida that they want to and has won all these national titles? I just don't think you put it in the hands of that guy right there. Well, and two, already this is a time where they're looked at right now as what was once a the team to beat. I mean, Florida State was everything. Derek Brooks, Dion when he played, the Peter Warwicks and Charlie Wards of the world, Warwick Dunn's, and now they're they're become a team that loses with their coach icing them against Wake Forest, and and and, and this is the week they have to play against Boston. This is pretty much it. Look, next week they've got a game right after that that they should win. It's against the team they're paying pretty much, and then you have a team after that in Florida that you're probably not going to win in the swamp. So this is the week. This week with Odell coming up there is the week where if they beat Boston College, they get a bowl if they want to play in the bowl. And then if they lose that game, they're pretty much out. So, I mean, this is like for, this is for bowl rights this week. Not that any of the coaches really, I mean, the players and fans are extremely excited about a bowl like in the Independence Bowl a couple of years ago, but it's still a, it's still something. And if you're, that's where it's come to. So Dion. Dion has the name, but nobody represents. Like nobody looks at Michael Jordan and is like, "I love what he's doing with the Hornets as a oh, GM." He's nobody, he's terrible. <laughs> he's horrible. He, he was like, he, he's literally jokingly choked a, a kid. He smacked a kid in the face, Malik Monk. But like he, I mean, he literally is making a career off just what he did as a player. I mean, yeah. he drafted Kwame Brown, Adam Morrison, the best player in franchise history, Kimba Walker. You don't even sign him. How many I mean, people really? out there in public? And you guys follow sports, uh, but Patrick Ewing is the coach of Georgia. How many people even knew that? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like that's, what, that's the point. That <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I'm just saying. That, but, but I'm saying most people probably don't know. Does it outside of you? Like, who is that seven foot one guy with bad hips? You know, like, all, all of a sudden he gets up and. But not too many people even know these guys because once they're done, we don't we don't really follow. We don't know Dikembe Mutombo is like working with the United Nations. We don't like these are not things that people we want to watch him go no 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 on commercials yeah. and smack boxes of cereal out of kids' hands. Like, oh, his nephew plays for the Clippers, Kevin Gelly. There you go. He, and he's pretty good too. If he yeah. was like three or four inches taller, he would be uh, like a yeah, one of the best players. Yeah, he's a little players. undersized. He's just a little short for his. But he, he the does game. shoot the ball pretty well to kind of yeah. make up for it, though. He's he's a perfect college player. I don't know if he's gonna ever do anything. I think it's us. a good stretch for, especially yeah. with the way the game's translating. Yeah. Montrez so, Harrell, it could be like that. I mean, he'd play like Harrell's that. a little bigger body. He, a he's thicker. more of a banger. Yeah. And Kevin Gelly, he is a good shot blocker because of his anticipation, yeah. but he he's more of an offensive bucket getter. Yeah. Harrell's a he's just a mean guy. <laughs> I watched that game last night. Kawhi's just nasty. It's, Kawhi's the best player in the NBA right now. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not uh, even. Uh, no. Oh. Uh, no. I. I disagree. But I'll let you say what you got to say. No, I don't. That's it. That's that's all. His actions are speaking louder than anything. Right now. I wish he was a better playmaker. I'll just say that. Last night down the stretch, Damian Lillard, who's looked at as like a top ten, oh, yeah. top twenty. I love him. Oh yeah. O oh, for six in the fourth quarter. Kawhi Leonard. Six for six at the line, six for ten from the field, and they came back from down by eight to come back and win that game. Like, That's it was a Patriots all... stat for you. Like be... you, you always got to go to the fourth quarter. There's more to the game than that. You got to look at the whole context. Yeah, look at his whole game. It's way better than Damien's. I'm just get, bringing I, up. I'm in saying the, in that the... he is better than than Damien, but don't well, just bring up one one piece of it. Come I'm just on. talking about the one I watched last night. That's okay, it. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm, if we want to bring up every Kawhi game, it's pretty much a track record. It seems like he only every time I've ever watched the guy play. He does something special. He single-handedly beat Philadelphia with the game-winning shot. Then he goes on to beat what nobody thought they could do in Golden State. Like he's only getting better. Kawhi Leonard is he? There's not a weakness to his game. There are Play weaknesses making. to LeBron right now. There is. So I I hear what you're saying. Kawhi but... doesn't miss 22 foot jumpers. LeBron hesitates some. LeBron's streaky. When he gets in that zone, right, he he's makes not a everything. Pure but he yeah. But he's a uh, he's way better of a playmaker. And I wish Kawhi was a better playmaker. That's all I'm saying with Kawhi. Like, he's not this basically standard that everyone makes him out to be. He does have flaws in his game, too. And I'm just saying with the ball in his hand, as much as it is, I would like to see him be a much better facilitator than what he is. That's all I'm saying. Okay. That's Fair all enough. I'm saying. But everything else is top tier for sure. So just if the ball's in your hands that much, you just need to be a little bit better as a playmaker. That's LeBron, all I'm saying. LeBron, this argument, when, I mean, it was always LeBron and Kevin Durant. And then Kawhi jumped into the picture, yeah. and he got his own chance. And Durant is out this year anyway, so yeah. it, it doesn't matter. But right now, currently, if I'm starting a team this year, just for one season, and I know LeBron's going to freak mode too, but for this year, the way that 
Kawhi just continues to get better, it seems. When we come back, we're going to talk some more about the big games coming up in college football. We'll also get to more on what's going on right now in high school football. Six big games in the area, and obviously, the countdown begins. 21 minutes, UCF and Tulsa. If you even truck drivers, are you looking for freedom beyond the open road? As an owner operator who leases on with Schneider, you'll find the independence you've been looking for. Lease on with Schneider through van truckload or bulk choice lease programs and do things your way. Our exclusive freight board means you pick the loads you want to haul from the convenience of your smartphone. Plus, with our maintenance discount program, you'll lower your business costs. Learn more about leasing on with Schneider at SchneiderOwnerOperators.com. That's SchneiderOwnerOperators.com. Welcome to the boat! Okay, hi, what are we doing today? I need something that screams something fun. Nothing too on the face, nothing too off the face, but also totally hot. So I have the perfect thing. It's the most food mullet. You're totally business in the front, but tailgate in the back. It's a fat party. People are having fun. You know, snap. All your friends are going to be like, whoa, awesome setup. Everyone else is going to be all jelly, okay? Just like a killer mullet, Moe's Catering will turn the back of your ride into a tailgate party that's sure to turn some heads. Just order ahead and pick it up on your way. Moe's Southwest Grill, now open in pace on Highway 90 next to Publix Grocery Store. Hey, sports fans, we know that we all fumble now and then when we're headed for the end zone, and our vehicles are no exception. Next time your bad ride is a little off sides, take it to Amco Transmission, your total car care facility. And with no interest financing, even with less than perfect credit, you'll drive away feeling as if you caught the winning touchdown. You always make the right play when you take your vehicle to Amco Transmission on Davis Highway, just south of Airport Boulevard. Visit them on Facebook or call 800-GO-AMCO. Double A, MCO. Saturdays are meant for sports, so Sports Call with Davis and Justin is here to kick off your sports weekend. College football, the NFL, the MLB, the NBA, the PGA Tour. If it's happening on Saturday, we're talking about it. Plus, weekly interviews with the players, coaches, and fellow journalists. Be a part of the show by calling or texting in at 623-1330. Sports Call with Davis and Justin every Saturday from 11 to 1 on ESPN Pensacola, 1330 AM, 991 FM. I'm Mina Kimes, host of the new podcast, ESPN Daily. Each morning, we'll bring you a deep dive into a single story from one of ESPN's hundreds of reporters. ESPN Daily is brought to you by Indeed, helping over 3 million businesses worldwide find their newest star players. Post job openings with skills tests, then sort, review, and communicate with candidates from an online dashboard. Sprint to Indeed.com slash ESPN Daily and find a winner. Terms and conditions apply. You're listening to Pensacola's local and ESPN Sports Station, your favorite ESPN radio shows, plus high school and UWF Argo football. ESPN Pensacola, 1330. And welcome back, Sports Drive, with you right here. Uh, it's all right. Uh, look, I'm married to one, so I, I I have to hear this. Actually, we we listened to this on replay all the way to LSU Texas A&M for like four hours, so uh, I, I know this song. And this, thank you for the 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 clean version of this of song, by the way. I just want to make sure of that. So just I had to so, think twice. Yeah. Usually, uh, out of habit, I go to the the real deal, and I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Out of go. habit, we would have been uh, you would have been taking the FCC call too. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. I w- I will not. The, I got a call one time. Uh, that I, I've I've had enough calls, so I I don't I don't need that. The things I've said have I've, we've gotten away this long. If I got like taken down for a song that you were playing for LSU, that would have been like the worst. Like all the things I've said, and that that's the the moment where I had nothing to do with it at all. That that's not how I'm going down. We're we're not going down that way. <laughs> Joining us now, who enjoyed that song? He was doing that in a kind way. As uh, Fred Barnett joins us here, a. Uh, uh, new Saint and uh, man, I was looking at all the videos, man, down there on the field and having some fun. And uh, man, the Saints been rocking at Bridgewater's, getting it done. Have you talked to Teddy at all? Is he? Uh, I talked to Teddy last or two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, before the Arizona. What a great job by him. I hope he. Now, what do you think from like a person, like a friend's standpoint to Teddy? Would you rather see him get his because he can make about. 
probably 15 to 20 million on a contract somewhere else? Or do you think being a backup for New Orleans is suitable, knowing that Breeze has maybe got three? I mean, this isn't like, people, oh, how dare you? Like, three years. Look, Brady might be done after that Ravens game. But uh, looking at the, the three years, something like that left, uh, would you rather see Bridgewater? I know as you'd rather see him as a Saint, but as like a friend, would you rather see him go out there and have a chance to, to make some money uh, with a new contract? I mean, here, here's the thing. You know, he can go to a uh, number of teams and start four and uh, make some good money. But – everybody's system is not the same. Mm -hmm. He might not prevail in the Dolphins system like he does in Sean Payton's system. So you're already the highest paid backup there is. You know at some point in time, Breeze is going to step down. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just is. He might yeah. get hurt again. Uh, knock on wood that he don't. But the city loves him. I mean, was it a game what, uh, two weeks ago against the Cardinals and they were chanting, Teddy, Teddy, yeah. Yeah. you know, and they put him in the game and the whole stadium went crazy. You know, so he's now a part of New Orleans now. He's part the of Saints the were also cheering Mitchell, Mitchell for for Chicago. How bad he was! They were celebrating now. You know, have you seen by that those stories? By the way, he needs to. I, I don't want to hear the noise. He said, "Turn that's off soft. all the TVs." Yeah, that, that is soft. I mean, yeah. you got to take the good and the bad. Yeah, that's that's not. You know, you're a coach. You know that. You don't. You don't. You gotta. You gotta hear both sides. You gotta hear the good and the bad. If everybody just told you it was good, you never be. You would always think that you can't get better. And the best always think they can get better. Right. And and I think uh, no, it's it, it, Trubisky's not going to be last. Uh, Baker Mayfield, he's he's sort of that like that that emotional girl that you've been with forever. Like that that high school girl that you know is like she's like a ten, a ten plus. But like you're like, have you dated her like nineteen times? Be like, yeah, man, I can't. She she always just gives me that look, and I'm like, I know what happened last week, bro. Like it's that that's that's Baker Mayfield. Like he's has those moments where you just you just want to get dump him, but then you're like, he still has all the talent. And and then you look at the spread this week, and the Browns are a three point favorite against the six and two Bills. Like they always give him a shot, and I I don't think his career is done. I think he. He, he can he can change it, but uh, Trubisky's going south real fast. I don't think he's going to be a starter anytime soon. Um, yeah, no, no. Yeah, we're, that's we're done with Mitchell on that one. So, so let me ask you this: Whenever he came out and said basically to turn off the TVs, me being in a locker room, I know me personally, I would have lost a lot of respect for him after that comment. With you being in a locker room, the perception of him after that comment, what would it be? Um, I, he's not my leader. Exactly. Yeah. I can't exactly. Fred probably would have been so, like, why is he still in our locker room? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> like, seriously, yeah. because if you think about it, with them being young quarterbacks, they typically have a longer leash because they always want to see how they turn out. But I think that right there, when you have people on the fence, they just made that jump once he made that comment. That's just how I perceived it. I just want to see how y'all perceived it. Fred, uh, we, we could talk about the games. Obviously, LSU, Alabama, I want to get to that. But uh, Petscola Jets, you guys have uh, been rocking it. I know you've been going back and forth uh, all, all through I-10, having some fun this year. And uh, talk about the season a little. Um, you know, we, we finished the season 5-2. Uh, and two. We got a championship game tomorrow in Baton Rouge. Look at that. <laughs> you know, we'll be yeah. playing at McKinley Stadium, which is um, two blocks away from LSU Stadium. Yep. So it's where Kevin Gates and Lil Boosie went to high school. Yep, yep. Uh, it's gonna be rocking. I'm just, I like thumbs up here. <laughs> oh, that's just if you're <laughs> no, from Baton Rouge, you know I, that. I know who the names are. I look. I married a, a a a LSU girl. I know all these names, by the way. She named our cat. No joke. This is before kids and all this. Please but tell me she named it Boosie. No, Wayne. Oh, Wayne. Okay. For Wayne Carter. It was named Wayne. It was named, <laughs> it was named Wayne Carter. I mean, for, but I didn't know who that was at first. And she's like Little Wayne. I'm like, oh, never mind. I'm like, I know who that is. But yeah, continue. <laughs> So yeah. I know all these names, please. Um, you know, we're playing against the uh, Lake Charles Rivercats out of Lake Charles. Uh, they've won it three years in a row. So um, our goal is to go down there and dethrone them, um, win this, bring it home back to Pensacola, and again, get ready and focus on the spring season. Looking at the uh, the team, and uh, I know you guys, have, we've, we've had a number of guys in here, and uh, you know, I appreciate you, you always bringing everybody up. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, who we got today. Well, we got uh, Marquise Turner. Uh, mm -hmm. this, this, this guy right here, man, he's uh, – it's electrifying. Mm -hmm. You know, he reminds you of Taysun Hill. Oh, nice. Yeah. He, he, he's my Swiss Army knife. Yeah. Quarterback, receiver. Well, I got to talk back. to him after the show. I got a couple neighbors that are starting to me. Taysun Hill seems like he's going to run these guys out of town here. He's just, get out of my head. <laughs> right, so we'll talk afterwards, my case. But uh, continue here. Yeah. With, uh, yeah. I haven't seen a, a cornerback who can cover him yet. I haven't seen a receiver who can get past him yet. He, he's that good. Um, I mean, when I say that good, I'm not even – you know, being ex exaggerating, I'm being dead serious. The guy's the guy's crazy. He he shouldn't be playing some pro football next year anymore. How much? Uh, and, and Marquise and, and Fred, you guys both have played at levels. Um, besides, I'm getting 
putting rat traps in my attic at this point in my life and chip too. So there's nothing going. I mean, besides a positive look, I'm, I'm, nobody needs to know these things. But what, you, what all I'm saying is here is you guys have been at that level very close. Eric's played college uh, basketball. And, and, and at that level of feeling like, you know, what's the difference how you guys feel about being – what you see on Sundays or even on Saturdays at some levels compared to what you're doing now, because being in semi-pro football, you're so close. I mean, you've been there at levels of that. Fred, you've played at the, the top level. What is it getting the chance sometimes? Because you see a guy like Rob Ninkovic who played for the, the Saints, great special teams guy, had a lot. He was always like one of the fan favorites, but he never really got a shot to go too far into the game. He goes to the Patriots, he got a shot, and then he became like a pro bowler with them, and now he's out there with a sweet beard on ESPN. With all that being said, sometimes it's about being in the right spot at the right time, but you know you're talented enough to be there. You see that a lot with the competition that you're going up against? Maybe it was a situation at home, something with, with grades in school, just something might have happened where that kid who could have been the top-tier recruit number one player is now playing against you guys and you're like dude this guy's just as good as i've seen out of guys like elliot on the field oh i mean i don't i can testify to that for my own team yeah i got guys right now who should be playing d1 ball or in the pros and that's the thing about it something happens in high school along the way and the coaches are like we're done with him you know oh he's a troublemaker we're done with him but this guy has all this talent i mean pensacola is full of talented athletes yeah they are yeah. and there are so many that are not doing nothing right now nothing and they got all this talent. So when you look at that, and you're like, man, okay, well, it's my job to get these guys where they're supposed to be at because nobody else gave them that chance. Mm-hmm. They were like, okay, we're done with you. Next, who's next, who's next? But that's not how we do it. We take the ones who've been passed on and say, you know what? I'm going to make you better. I'm going to help you get better and let you achieve the goal that you're trying to achieve. You're trying to get to college. You're trying to get to the pros. We're going to get you there because nobody else gave you a chance, but we'll give you that chance. We're, we're the second chance team. That's awesome right there. Yeah, we got a lot of good uh, – Jeff Price is a uh, three-time shuffleboard champion at Assisted Living Facilities here in Pensacola. So we got a lot of good athletes in the, in the room here today. Uh, Marquise, you know, you guys, uh, when, it, when it comes down to it, uh, and, and I know yeah, I'll, I'll go sort of hand over the mic to you a little on this one, but uh, when you talk about the, uh, the team and, and getting to play and, and coach by Fred and the guys, just talk about a, a chance to play football but also represent Pensacola. And uh, I've called Fred's games and, and a lot of good players out there, but just talk about being a, a Pensacola Jet and what it means. All right, we're good to go now. Yeah, um, it feels good to me, you know, from being from down here and stuff. I just like to play football for real, and I know I could be the best at it. So just uh, with the matchups that you see, what are some, like, matchups that you go against that just kind of gives you that confidence moving forward? Like, do you have any, like, big-name players that you recognize, like, from playing in high school or – just around the local area that you know whenever you get to match up against them that you know this is your chance to really show what you're capable of? Like, what are some big matchups that you've been against uh, this year so far? Really my teammates. Your teammates? Yeah, like, that's what a lot of people don't realize. Like, whenever you have these uh, people that transfer and things like that, like a Joe Burrow and uh, Justin Fields and things like that, you're getting better just by practicing against those types of, of, of people all the time. And I know, like, for me, whenever I played, I was playing heavy minutes as a freshman. So... I was getting better a lot quicker because I was playing against varsity while my other friends were basically practicing against each other and things like that. So, you know, whenever you were talking about you uh, playing against some of your teammates, what are some of the teammates that you have that are just some, some good matchups? Like, if you want to give them a shout out. Um, Sharp, our corner, our safety, Ronnie King, um, Blue, one of our other corner safeties. Um, I'll say DD2. He's pretty good too, and a couple of linebackers too, outside linebackers. Now, they, do do y'all do like uh anything to kind of like have like some measurements to compare against other talents? So like, do y'all do y'all's forties and y'all's bench reps and like three cone drills and things like that to kind of give y'all some numbers as to compare against like some of the other talent like in the NFL and things like that? Do y'all have like some numbers that y'all do like that? Not yet, not yet. So I know, like, for me, whenever I go to the gym, I, I like to do a combine, a vertical jump, and things like that just to see where I was going. So I was just curious to see if y'all had, like, something to where y'all can send, like, some tape and some film to try to get y'all that exposure that you were talking about. Well, we got film. We got film on games right now and stuff. All right, well, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll come back uh, for a little bit more. This is uh, ESPN Pensacola, 1330, 99.1 FM. 
Imogene and I started Jewelers Trade Shop in 1956. Our goal at Jewelers Trade Shop has always been to give our customers the best experience imaginable. It's something that my grandfather instilled in my father, and without a doubt, my father has passed on to me. Those basic core goals and values that shaped our business 56 years ago are still very much alive and a driving force behind Jewelers Trade Shop today. For three generations, the story continues. Jewelers Trade Shop in downtown Pensacola. Get your vehicle ready for holiday road trips with these Pensacola Honda service specials. Save $10 on a lube, oil, and filter change, brake inspection, top-off fluids, multi-point inspection, and complimentary car wash, only $44.95. Pensacola Honda's tire rotation, tire balance, and alignment, all for $139. And engine air filter and cabin filter replacement, only $99.95. PensacolaHonda.com or Pensacola Boulevard at W Street. Pensacola Honda, home of the one price, low price guarantee. Individuals and businesses with tax problems. Listen carefully. If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, U.S. Tax Shield can help you take back control. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Our team of tax attorneys can stop collections and get you protected. U.S. Tax Shield offers a price protection guaranteed quote to get you protected today. U.S. Tax Shield is A-plus rated with the BBB, so call 800-494-6139. U.S. Tax Shield, 800-494-6139. Individuals and businesses with tax problems. Listen carefully. If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, U.S. Tax Shield can help you take back control. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Our team of tax attorneys can stop collections and get you protected. U.S. Tax Shield offers a price protection guaranteed quote to get you protected today. U.S. Tax Shield is A-plus rated with the BBB, so call 800-494-6139. U.S. Tax Shield, 800-494-6139. You're listening to Pensacola's local and ESPN Sports Station. Your favorite ESPN radio shows, plus high school and UWF Argo football. ESPN Pensacola, 1330. I'm a really diamond, and I'm shining bright because I'm really good. And welcome back. Sports Drive with you right here, ESPN Pensacola. A few minutes before the top of the hour here. A lot of high school games in the area as well. A big week. Uh, New Orleans Saints fans get the Atlanta Falcons. and It's always nicer when they're, they're coming in 1-7 and seven and, and you're 7-1. and one. But uh, uh, looking at 7-1 uh, and one or 8-1? and 7-1, one? and one, correct? Seven and they're one. on the bye. Okay. Um, I look right now at uh, – there's really no excuse for how bad Atlanta is. You know, there's some teams that actually, like, you look at their roster. Like the Miami – Dolphins, like everybody that was good for the Jets, either have has given up on the team or is now hurt. You know, like or like you look overall, like CJ Mosley's not playing now. Bell's been in and out. Those guys are just not. The Dolphins have a horrible roster. They got rid of anybody that was good. It seemed, uh, but and I'm sorry if any of these guys are your friends, but I'm talking about for the top tier players. But but then the the difference is like Atlanta's got. You know, you still look at Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley and Devonta Freeman and and Matt Ryan's playing yeah, this Pro week. And, uh, I mean, like, there's no excuse for them to be that crappy. I mean, and the Saints are that good. So, uh, but it's always a rivalry. I, I think a lot of people that that know the Saints Falcons this week aren't like, whoa, let's we're not just walking in there thinking we're about to waltz to a thirty point win. No, I mean <laughs> it, it's it's going to be competitive. Um, but, you know, the Saints are playing at an elite level this year. Our defense, yep. man, oh, my goodness. Our defense is just <laughs> – we're just shutting everything down. We shut down every running back. Zeke, we shut him down. Um, Gurley, we shut him down. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, running quarterbacks, Russell Wilson, shut him down. Watson, shut him down. Uh, little big Kyler Murray, shut yep. him down. Yeah. Uh, and it was funny, the last game, uh, the Arizona game, I was given – they had a, a safety a cornerback, 34 Thompson, for the Cardinals. Mm -hmm. He could hear me ragging on him because he's, he's looking. He's like – and I'm like – I'm just talking so much noise to him. And the, the, the other fans are going crazy because he's, he's hearing me. And then he gets scored on by Michael Thomas. Yeah. And then, yeah, I'm like I was in his, I was in his head the whole game. It's kind of like uh, interesting to see this year in, in football in Louisiana. The Saints have a defense and LSU has an offense. Right. At the same time. Right. <laughs> so it's – it's, it's definitely not something I've ever seen in my lifetime. But uh, we got a couple minutes here. Fred, I want to ask you, uh, Marquise, you guys, uh, 
you're getting ready for the games. Uh, tell everybody, is there any way that they can get involved? I know you got the season and also, you know, get the early start. I know this is the championship and the run and you're going to be in Baton Rouge, but just uh, to talk a little bit and get more awareness because, you know, this is our local team. This is the local semi-pro football team, but it's our, you know, we have the Wahoos in baseball. You got the Ice Flyers in hockey. Uh, this is our our, our team. You know, we've got, uh, this is something that I, we want to promote and do everything we can. So just talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, we're going to start back up in December. We're going to have a couple of big tryouts. We're going to um, mix in some free clinics for uh, kids mm -hmm. to come out um, and get some um, some teaching and some coaching. And uh, we're going to do a lot of big things for the city, you know, for these players uh, this spring season. It's a big spring season, mm -hmm. so we're looking forward to it. Um, still need sponsors. You know, guys, check our website out, PensacolaJets.com, Facebook, Greater Pensacola Jets, and uh, really get involved. You can help change some of these guys' lives, and in turn, they can help change your life. Well, hey, we're, we're excited, and uh, as always, guys, good luck, and uh, I know we'll be talking here soon. Yes, Fred sir. Marquise, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. We're coming back for more. Jeff, Eric, all the gang, and uh, having some fun. UCF Tulsa, everybody. <laughs> Nobody cares. Football is here. Catch all the UWF Argos games and the big NFL games every Saturday and Sunday on Pensacola's home for hometown sports. ESPN Pensacola, 1330 AM, 991 FM. If you would like to be a part of ESPN Pensacola as a sponsor or promotional partner, just give us a call at 262-6000 or visit our website at ESPNPensacola.com. ESPN Pensacola, 1330 AM, 991 FM, WEBY, Milton, Pensacola. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Just become the NFL's all-time leading rusher. Across the middle, and it's caught for the first. It's Baldwin shaking free and sprinting down the sideline for the touchdown. His third of the day. Doug Baldwin. Derek Brooks, who ran back three interceptions for touchdowns in the regular season, does it to cement the Super Bowl. Boxing's elite, the new WBA heavyweight champion. And this time, his name is Bubba. Bubba scores on a 34-yard touchdown run by the Dope Walker Award winner, Trent Richardson, who broke a lot of Emmett Smith's records back in Pensacola, Florida. And welcome back. That deep breath right there, like I'm, like in a horror movie. <gasps> yeah, did that one time. It, Mike, thank you. That's okay, buddy. It's all right. It's, that's okay. There's things happening. You turned, you actually, you didn't get me. You turned your mic off, and he just hears through that. Don't oh, just so I've been I doing it wrong It is time. Friday, and I do not care at all. But but uh, but for everybody, somebody driving was like, what was that? But, uh, hey, we got a lot to talk about today. Thanks again to Fred Barnett and the, yep. uh, the whole crew right there. I want to get in this conversation about um, – Philip Rivers, uh, that was – if he was trying to – for for a statement to be made about him being in the Hall of Fame, and I know you can't judge it on one. He's played for a long time. He's got like 75 children. He's Thank been you for addressing me. that. I, I want to make that clear. I am, but that's also not making my your point valid about Kawhi 
to go back to our argument. Oh, jeez. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> well, listen, listen. No, he's the one who brought listen. it up. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I was going to say. I'm capable of defending myself. If, if we want to keep tracking back, Kawhi, we have to date way back before. Has Kawhi even had a bad basketball game? Even with the Spurs, he was playing with other good athletes. Sure, I mean, I would be but, more than happy to mention game seven against the, uh, the Spurs in the Heat. LeBron James actually hit the jump shot over Kawhi Leonard to win the championship. But, you know, if you want to bring it up. Hey, so Tulsa is a 17-point underdog. How about 18 that? 18 now, folks. Let's not oh, – well, don't, don't shortchange us here. Uh, to, to put Phillip Rivers, uh, that looked like Happy Feet, the movie three with penguins, and, and, and not the fun. Like, kids actually pay for that. And like, oh, that was beautiful. There was voices. Like, I know who Danny DeVito is. Like, that, that was just awful. It was just – you have to at one point as a quarterback at any level, peewee level, you need to know that when you step back, based on the pocket, if you have fast defensive ends, which Oakland has good – good, de- I mean, the guys get a lot of rookies. pressure. Yeah. And, and they're getting a lot of pressure. So what you do is you step back inside the pocket. Correct. So, But every time he would step back, he would see the, the outside rush, and he would get, oh, and he just throw it way up in the air. And I'm sitting there going, what are you doing, man? You're, you've been in the league – more than you're, you've been in the league longer than I think it's like. I think there was a stat. There's you can have 16 different quarterbacks right now that started a game this year, and Philip Rivers has played more if you put their career together. So think about that. Like Philip Rivers has been playing forever. He yeah, he came some of these in the 2004 guys. draft. Yeah. So uh, Eli Manning is it, like people were like he should retire a long time ago. Remember, Philip and Eli were in the same class, one and four. And, but we looked at Philip as like ah, he still got it. Well, last night was probably the uh, the tipping point on that. That was that was the moment right there to me. Uh, that was a. I, I've said a lot of positive things because I was on the show yesterday talking about that I believe fifty two to percent to forty eight percent that he was a Hall of Famer that he deserved and he still might still be. I'm not going to judge this one game, yes. but yeah, but that that was not. You can't look like that at any time. I mean, that was one of the worst drives I've ever seen in that final play. Like, sure. they, Daniel Carlson, when Carlson misses that extra point and everybody's going, oh, my gosh, they're just going to go down and win by one. And the spread's one and a half, too. So people are like, this is what Vegas does. You know, people are like, well, I don't need to take the money line. They just have to win by two here. And then they find a way to win by one. But everybody thought, OK, Philip Rivers, just you've got Keenan Allen and Hunter Henry and Mike Williams from Clemson and and Melvin Gordon on that field. And Austin Eckler. I mean, you got better weapons. They maybe have may, they might have the top just playmakers. They're in the top five in the NFL for, for guys to get the ball to. Like, if you gave Tom Brady or if you gave Drew Brees, Ooh. if you gave Tom Brady or Drew Brees right now in the offenses they have, like, you never would want to get rid of Kamara and Thomas, and Edelman would still make it. That would probably be it. James White's reliable, but he, you look right now, if you, you took the roster, Hunter Henry is a beast at a tight end when he gets the ball. Keenan Allen's a top 10 receiver in the NFL. You've got Melvin Gordon's a top 10 running back when he's he's starting to get the, the, yep. the juices flowing. Eckler's very serviceable. He's very underrated at the way he plays. And then you've got a guy like Mike Williams, who's a huge target that can make plays. And Rivers is just dancing back there, just chucking the ball up, moon rocking it. Like, you're playing a Thanksgiving I, pickup game with your family. No, I hear what you're saying. It's definitely a disappointing performance. But one thing I've been saying all I'm year. I'm still listening, by the way. No, that's okay, fine. I know. I know, I I know your ears still work. Yeah. So one thing that I'm saying, though, with – with the, uh, that game specifically, I've been saying all year, the Raiders are not as bad as the public perception. So I think a lot of the credit needs to go to the Raiders as opposed to Shaman Phillip Rivers because his body of work says that he's still a baller. The second thing is, let's not forget that they were going through some changes offensively in terms of their coordinator, so there are some things that they do still need to work out. As far as the Chargers themselves go, they've been underperforming all year. So it isn't like they're coming in with a lot of momentum. And the Raiders are not that bad. The Raiders aren't that bad, but they should have. And they're Josh probably going to win their next jo- two. Josh Jacobs, I think everybody, because, see, we understand more about the, the Southeastern Conference. Everybody watches the SEC, but we know it. We live and breathe it. This is our job. So, like, when Josh Jacobs was taken later in the first round, I was like, man, they got a player. And like, they, everybody was like, this guy's really good. And he's been really good. He's been the offensive MVP so far this year for rookies. I, I, I mean, Without him, they're a different team. Because when Washington was touching the ball a few times, they it was like ah, yeah, you get like a two-yard loss, and then they put Jacobs back in. He go like ten yards down the field. Uh, that was a big third down run. But Philip Rivers just—I uh, I think it's time to. I think that was the moment to me where it, Chargers are now on that list. They need to start figuring it out because 
he might have not only cost himself long term, and Rivers can sort of go out on his own, but uh, his coach as well, because that was that was a bad final drive. That was as bad. O for eight with just eight eight moon launches. There was no design play. It was him to run every single time, and and that's a sad feeling for your fan base. When you don't feel like you're going to make bad throws or you're going to make designs or things like that, but it's a bad feeling when you feel like the second you hike the football, you got four guys coming and you're just throwing it way up in the air. That was the game plan. I mean, it, but we keep expecting the Chargers to be different when they continue to put that same product on the field every week. And I think it's like you said, you got to give a lot of credit to Oakland and, and Gruden in the beginning. We were like, <laughs> Uh, he, you know, at least he's getting paid, that type of thing. And now he's turning them around where they, they, they have some talent, but they don't have a whole lot of talent. Mm-hmm. And so what he's doing, you know, you look at what he can do in the next few years, it should be special over there. But for the Chargers, let me ask you this. Do you think it is time to to prepare for the future? When you talk about Phillip Rivers, you know, we, he could possibly play two, three more years easy. Well, but do you think it's time to, you know, kind of break loose? We talk about the Giants with Eli Manning. They, they Everybody's like, oh, just get him out of there. Let him go his own way and, you know, play the last few years, whatever. Is it time for Phillip Rivers? So to answer your question, I, I follow the draft. I'm a big draft guy. Chad knows this. I love the draft. That's like my thing. And they actually are projected to draft a quarterback of the future this year. And a lot of people have them getting Joe Burrow or Herbert because they expect one of those to slide to around pick 12 to 14 where the Chargers are expected to go and kind of have Phillip Rivers groom him. So to answer your question, they will go at quarterback most likely. And to top it all off, if you look at the weapons that Chad just said, there's really not a pressing need in terms of what you got to get in that first round anyways to where now is the year for you to get that security blanket. So I do think they will go quarterback, but I don't think he's expected to play right away because unlike Eli Manning, Phillip Rivers is still going to perform at a Pro Bowl level contrary to what you saw on the field last night. So I think they will kind of get that security blanket because they have What about Matt Ryan getting traded out of Atlanta? I don't see that happening. I don't either. But, but do, I mean, just just on a side note, do, do you think that Philip Rivers, because we know like Ben Roethlisberger when they draft quarterbacks, he doesn't like that. Do you think that Philip Rivers' understanding he's going to be kind of like grooming him, or is he going to be that guy that's like get out of here? Philip, <laughs> no, I don't think he would be that guy to say get out of here. I, I really do think Philip Rivers is a cool guy, right. but I mean Ben yeah. Ben Roethlisberger, I could see him being a little bit sensitive about it because he's he's basically have said he wanted to play to a certain age and things like that. But Philip Rivers, for the most part, I don't think that would be the case for him because he understood that he was sitting behind Drew Brees. So he's actually is basically coming full circle for him, whereas Ben yeah. Roethlisberger, the guy for him was Tommy Maddox. So it wasn't like there was really like a massive, you know, cloud over his head as to when he's going to get on the field. A little bit different when you got Drew Brees in front of you. Yeah. So I think Philip Rivers being in that situation could kind of say, OK, I'm 38. I kind of get what's going on here. Roethlisberger, I can see why he was a little sensitive about it. That's just my take. LSU versus Alabama. We've talked about it all week long, and uh, the game is is coming up tomorrow. 2.30, great spot right there. And, um, you know, Gary Danielson's comments, it, the kind of comments, if you, you see these long pauses, by the way, you, yeah, you guys know. know what's happening right now. Yeah. So you've never watched a game. Not, not that this is important at all, vital to anybody's success, but uh, to me it is. It's always. Uh, moving on here. Nobody has any clue. UCF's on TV, by the way. Uh, so, they're like, still don't care. Okay, so if you look at LSU and Alabama, though, Nick Saban, by the way, has less amount of home losses. He has more championships than he has home losses. Think about that. Like he has, He's won five titles with Alabama. He has four in the history of the program, losses at home. So it's a pretty decent stat right there. <laughs> he has a better chance for your team every year to win a title than to lose at home. And that's, I mean, even this year, you would say that same, the, the percentage is still on his yeah. side. So uh, that's that's a pretty fascinating stat, but nobody's shocked by the way they've dominated. I, I just look at this, and, and as much as I want to continue, and I'm going to be watching with LSU people, I just can't, I'm not going to, to lie to my heart. Like the Minnesota-Penn State game, uh, Penn State, they're both teams that are vulnerable, so I'm just going with Minnesota. Penn State's a better roster, but the hype, the energy, everything going on, I'm just going with that. But I'm not like breaking it down like Minnesota's better for this. I want to pick LSU. I, I want to, but it's going to be Joe Burrow having one of those Deshaun Watson type games, so those games that just go to freak mode where they win and have to score early. Because if Alabama gets a lead, they're going to want to try to, to run the time of possession battle. And 
LSU's defense, this is not one of the better LSU's defenses I've ever seen. I've, we've seen some real physical, the days of the Glenn Dorseys, the Booger McFarlands, the Marcus Spears, the guys in the middle, the nasties. This team doesn't have that. And, and especially when you lost Divinity, who's been one of their better players, who's not going to be playing in this game. So I just look and say, I hope that Burrow can just shoot it out because he can. He's proven that. But if Tua comes back at, and just looks sort of like Tua, and we've seen him hurt not look like Tua because one, the one knock on him is that the pressure in the pocket is he's injury prone, and he also, when he's hurt, that game against Georgia that we're basing it on, he didn't look the same when he was out there trying to play with that hurt ankle. Now, it's a different ankle, and that ankle is more on the throwing ankle, but this is one that you still... With all that, I'm trying to find ways to think of why Alabama wouldn't lose. But if it's just straight up, I see it 42-34. I think you're going to get some points in this. I think 42-34 or something like that, Alabama wins over LSU. Yeah, and and I'm with you. I'd like to see LSU pull it off, and it would be such an awesome story. And it's going to be really, really tough. And and the other the part that I told you yesterday, we talked about this. I think the key for LSU winning this ball game is. No matter if two is healthy or not, you're going to have to find a way to pressure him in the pocket. And I just don't know if that defensive line's going to, with the really good credit to Alabama's offensive yeah. line, are you going to be able to reach him? Because if he can sit back there and throw, he can pick anybody apart, and they've got the receivers to do it. You got guys like Delpit and Stingley back there. They're going they're going to have their hands full all night long. Yeah. But with the way you look at it, Alabama's defense and then LSU's offense, it may just take one pick. I mean, that may be the difference in this game here. But the question is, can they get it? So both of y'all bring up some interesting points that I'm going to touch on. Chad, you mentioned that this is not the same LSU defense that we're used to. In contrast, this is also not the same Alabama defense. No, you're, you're exactly right. So yeah. the way I look at it is they're hurting really bad in the middle because they lost Dylan Moses. And therefore, with Hilaire and Moss, I think they're going to see some opportunities in the middle of the field that they were not accustomed to in years past. So I'll throw that out there. The most important thing that I always look at too, and I'm going to bring the Patriots up in, in this conversation because you're going to see what I mean by this, is I do not like, and I'm not a fan, of rooting for a team whenever you're playing against a team where the better coach has an extra week to prepare. So Nick Saban has two weeks to prepare for this. Typically when you have a bye week and both teams have a bye week, the better coaching staff gets the upper hand. way that you see that, the Patriots look at what they did to the Rams. They had an extra week to prepare, and it made a Rams offense that looked like, how are they going to stop it? All of a sudden, they're scoring three points. When they made the change with the Pro Bowl and moved it, I was not a fan because I knew what that meant for the Patriots, and I do not like the Patriots. They give an extra week to prepare for Bill Belichick. So naturally, of course, with them being as smart as they are, they're going to find ways to exploit the other team that the other team may not necessarily have the same opportunity to do. And whenever I look at it right now, it's like, okay, do you really want to give Nick Saban two weeks to prepare for a team and give Ed Ogeron two weeks to prepare for a team? Who do you think is going to have the better game plan? It's probably going to be Alabama. So knowing what I know with that, and it just seems to always work that way, I think Alabama's going to win 38-27. And that's why when you have those bye weeks, the, the better coaching staff usually always gets the upper hand, point blank period. Just think with Alabama, the thing too is, and you can weigh in 850-623-1330, uh, I think that it, it really truly is going to come down to the one, and it's not even like thinking outside the box. It's how healthy is Tua. Yeah. I mean, we know that he's got the ankle injury, but uh, I've dealt with some high ankle sprains. That was just timing that I put my I know, foot up here. Nothing to do with at, it. I'm looking just, at his ankle I'm getting right lazy. I'm just getting lazy. I'm putting my feet up. It had nothing to do with like a physical exam to show here. Um, but uh, yeah, look, Vanna White, <laughs> my foot here. Um, I've had we've all if you play basketball or anything you've had ankle injuries in any really sport whether it's a severe sprain people have had ankle injuries are like the easiest to come by in sports maybe not shuffleboard that's true yeah. well they, oh no no that one time the cement Chad, the concrete Chad, was a little you off you just him. don't understand my struggle with shuffleboard okay you're not a champion all right when the day that you thought you're playing shuffleboard but it was curling and he slipped on the yep. ice he was out six to eight, six eight weeks I think with he was but, questionable um, and doubtful for right. a little yeah, yeah, was yeah. <laughs> but, day to day <laughs> but um. I got distracted by these chili cheese bites on TV, but uh, it, it's not on yours. But um, looking at oh, there's a burger commercial. All right, so what's going on right now is for the 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 Bama and LSU game. If you look right now at the way Tua has played, if he's healthy, they're going to win this game. I think and Joe Burrow. They can go pound for pound, but 
if he's not, which when he was at Georgia, he didn't look that good. That game against Georgia was like, oh, okay, that's the only game I like sat back and I'm like, mm, didn't didn't really look like Tua there. So based on that alone, if that's the guy that we get, then LSU's got a shot. A lot of good teams have a shot. LSU, the eye test is so important. And Joe Burrow is not only winning the eye test, he's crushing it. He's as good as it gets right now. He doesn't miss passes. He's making incredible throws. He's making Heisman type like Brett Favre plays against Texas, against Florida. But the difference is you look at those three games. Those are the three games. Texas, Florida, and Auburn are the three games that are the the games that are giving LSU why look at strength the schedule. And they keep going to that. Well, LSU beat this, this, this. First of Alabama would beat all three of those teams too. So that's not the point here. It's how they beat them. Auburn was right there in the mix, was winning in the third quarter. We yeah, could have won con- that game. The context of the game, the LSU clearly was was dominating it the whole time. The score is closer than what it really was, but it was never really in doubt. They were uh, fourth and one in goal lines and going for it multiple times, and they just didn't punch it in. I mean, the- realistically, it could have been like 38-13, to 13, and then Auburn had the one to Williams on the left side downfield at, you know, out of desperation. I know what you're saying, but it wasn't. That's all I'm saying. I, I get what you're saying. The score is close. No, 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 no. Because uh, we, I made the same point for the Georgia versus Florida game. It was a seven-point game, but yeah. Georgia was never out of reach. However, though, when your final score of your game is 23-20, to 20, what I mean is you didn't massacre a team. Regardless of the result, if you win by three points, like Alabama has beaten good teams, like Clemson has beaten good teams in the past. When you beat teams 48-7 to 7 or 55-7, to 7, like that's annihilating. That's just dominating that. When, when Alabama played USC on that first game, the neutral site, and they beat them fifty-five to three. I thought you were going to say uh, Notre Dame because that was brutal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I know what you say, you're saying. But there was at one point, you know, right there, because you mentioned the eye test, and that's what I saw. I understand that, but it was a three-point game, and yes. it, so regardless of that, LSU is the better team. But beating Auburn at home, it. it by three isn't like wow. Look at the, the the this team is superior to everybody. The game against Florida, they won by by fourteen, but it was closer than that. It was a game where Florida was up twenty eight to twenty one, and they were going back and forth. I mean, they were scoring. And Kyle Trask had a great game, and their offense played well. And then the game against Texas, both teams were going up and down the field and scoring. Yeah, that was exciting. And, and but Texas, but clearly LSU's offense was better, and they made more plays. They were the better football team. There was never a moment though that there was just a total, like, we're that much better than you guys. I mean, meaning, like, uh, extremely better. We're better. Everybody knew they were better. They didn't get lucky to win. Like, South Carolina, maybe if they play Georgia, they're not going to do that again. They didn't get lucky. They were better. But they weren't severely better like some of those, like, great teams in college football have done. I think LSU is a very good football team with an elite quarterback right now the way he's playing. And and I don't I, I hope I'm wrong I hope LSU beats Alabama me too but, but but with this being said Alabama's still the better roster they're they're at home and when people say it's a six and a half point spread frankly Gene Stallings and he doesn't lie Gene's not saying that for Alabama but Gene's like I would set this line at eleven and you just picked eleven I think honestly thirty five to twenty four sounds about right I mean eleven points would be fine it's well, well let me ask you this Florida's defense and Auburn's defense do you put them over Alabama's defense he- heck no. I would put Auburn's. Auburn's closer. Florida's defense is not. Florida's defense has a few good pieces. I think Florida's about equivalent to Alabama. What I mean by that is right. like what you got on the outside I think, no. with C.J. Henderson and Pat Sertain I think are very comparable. No, uh, comparable. You, Florida and guys, Florida and Alabama's defense, they're not the same. So well, how close are they in your opinion? There's a lot of injuries to Alabama's defense, but they still have guys like well, yeah, there's no Raekwon right Davises and those guys up front. There, there's no. some nasty defense. They're better in the secondary, I would think, with Xavier McKinney and you know Pastor Tan and things like that. I would say that's where their strength is right now. So we'll say we'll say Auburn's. Okay, so you're saying Auburn's defense is better than Alabama's defense? No, I did not say that. I did not say that. You do, said do, that. Do no, you think no. that? I think Auburn's defense is better than Alabama's. I, defense. I agree with that, and 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 what I'm saying for this year is with LSU, they can score proven they can score on anybody and I don't mean like at will but they can score on anybody and that's not been the case in the past and when you look at Alabama's defense is vulnerable now and I say vulnerable like they have a bunch of injuries and things like that they can be scored on I think that's what I think LSU knows that and I think that regardless I, I still think it's going to be a 34-31 game okay. just because and, and the only reason I give it to Alabama is I think if this is in Baton Rouge it's a little bit different because it's so tough to play there but I think it's just hard to beat Alabama at home 
But I think with the fact that they can score, they know they can score. Like, LSU knows they can score. They believe they can score where they've come into this game before believing, you know, with yeah. with quotation marks. But do they really believe? Because they're going to run the football three times and then they're going to get stuffed. And, yeah. you know, I just think that, that the fact that they have that offensive ability this year, I, I don't think they're getting enough respect like they should. Not saying they're going to win the ball game, but I Alabama, they've got to be on upset alert. They just have to watch. And I know that Saban loves this type of game when LSU is as good as they are now. Like, he's got this bulletin board material for him. You know, Orgeron's talking about we've got bigger games coming up in the you know later on in the year. You know, you saw the hype video for Alabama. He, they put Of course, they put that in there. Yeah. So, I, I just I, – I really hope LSU pulls the upset. But I just think it's going to be a lot closer than, than 11 points, what people think. Might be a good time to break. This is embarrassing right now. Touchdown, Tulsa. We didn't Ooh, need the, that should the have been my Jared Hawker pick. I'm upset. I am upset. The literally, golden so let's hurricane, go to my, go baby. Ahead. All this right, is, let's take a break. This then. is embarrassing. There's a lot going on right now, and broadcasters are on the ground covering all of it, bringing you the weather, the traffic, and breaking news, all while entertaining you 24 hours a day. Someone needs to tell you what's going on around the world and in our hometowns. And that someone is us. We are free radio. We are always there. We are broadcasters. Visit wearebroadcasters.com or text radio to 52886 to learn more. Furnished by NAB and this station. To give batters a different look, pitchers throw a changeup. Your idea of a different look is sunglasses. That's true. But La Quinta Inns and Suites is really taking the different look thing to a new level. Definitely a major league makeover, starting with a bolder, brighter lobby full of comfortable spaces to let you settle in. Or chill out in front of a big, flat screen like Wingo would. Oh, you know it. It's a changing La Quinta look to help you get in the zone and look sharp when you hit that big meeting. Prepare to win at business with La Quinta Inns and Suites. Book now at LQ.com. Rally Up Pensacola. Harley-Davidson of Pensacola Bike Rally starts Thursday. Four days of motorcycles, vendors, music, food, and fun. Ride out to Harley-Davidson of Pensacola this Thursday for live music from ADD, food for purchase from Temperley's British Eatery, and Harley's Angels serving free beer. The ride ends Sunday with a bike wash. Fall is here, but riding season is not over. Rally Up Pensacola for the Harley-Davidson of Pensacola Bike Rally this Thursday through Sunday. Harley-Davidson of Pensacola. Let's ride. What if people had a battery level icon? Like on your phone. You'd see a lot of us in need of a recharge. Thank goodness there's 5-Hour Energy. Because just one sugar-free, vitamin-packed 5-Hour Energy shot can get you all the way back to 100% fast. And isn't life better at 100%? 5-Hour Energy. Get back to 100%. For more information, visit 5hourenergy.com. Calling all Gator fans. Time to get down and dirty in the swamp. Tony to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Here comes Reverso. And the Gators win. Jordan Matthews is a postseason hero. ESPN Pensacola 1330 FM 991 brings you Go Gators every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Go Gators on ESPN Pensacola 1330 FM 991. Brought to you by the Holman Law Firm. Hear ye, hear ye. I bringeth thee a message from... him. <clears throat> a message from the king and his new trumpeteer, Stephen. The king wishes me to convey his favor to thine team and thine tailgate. Not yet. He invites thee to let the bot light flow forth. And he also wishes me to tell thee that he toasts thee. Waiteth until the end, Stephen! With Game Day's favorite light logger and the slogan of his kingdom... Go! Oh, dilly dilly! Enjoy responsibly Bud Light Beer, AB St. Louis, Missouri. The Paul Feinbaum Show. Everything you wanted to happen oh. hasn't happened. Oh, my gosh. That's all any of y'all going to talk about is Alabama. You're really not understanding the conversation, but anyway, we can move on. Alabama's dynasty has just begun. Hold on a second, Charles. Somebody wants to talk to you. I don't want to talk to that compelling moron. He's okay. nothing but a lame-headed old man. 2 till 5 every weekday afternoon. ESPN Pensacola, 1330 AM, 99.1 FM. You're out of your freaking mind, cow turd. You're listening to Pensacola's local and ESPN sports station. Your favorite ESPN radio shows, plus high school and UWF Argo football. ESPN Pensacola, 1330.
Welcome back. Sports Drive with you right here on this Friday evening. It's been a fun show. Fred Barnett of the Pensacola Jets, our semi-pro football team. They'll be in Baton Rouge tomorrow for a championship game. Kind enough to make time for us as uh, he was out here, as well as uh, Marquise, their star player. And also, we have a chance to uh, to talk with uh, Brian Ahatz, the Pensacola News Journal. Big games. Jeff, uh, you got to cover a lot of these games, and uh, you made it clear. And I called the games with WFGX as well uh, back in the day. And we also had that the, the curse of... 60 point games you know it seemed like every week <laughs> they were there yeah the running clock um but i look right now at uh, a lot of these teams and i've seen a few of them play this year but is there one team that you really truly feel going into these playoff uh, with, with the scambia with pine forest with pensacola catholic with northview jay and pine forest all the teams across the board with all four i mean with all six that uh one team has as a legit shot I think there's three, and I know you you say one. And I, I agree with Brian a lot. I think you know we've seen a Scambia; they've been good for a while, but they've always had those flaws. I just don't think this team has a flaw. You know, watching them, they just demolish people. Yeah, like they literally, it's like they just take your will from you, and you you maybe get like a 15 yard gain, and the next one they're running a pick in the end zone. Their defense, I think, is what sets them apart because their offense has always been good. Av Smith and Tony Broadnax and guys like that, and. Uh, JoJo Black, I mean, they're just uh, – DT Gideon, you can go on and on. Frank Pizant in the backfield, like, they're phenomenal. Like I said, though, from special teams to everything, they're really good. You look at Pensacola Catholic, this is just a special year with Jacoby Jackson mm-hmm. and Wayman Jordan, Demarius McGee, those guys. They have just got it figured out. Coach has done a fantastic job over there. And then the team we forget about in the north end of the county with Northview, mm-hmm. you know, we we did the Northview-Baker game, which yeah. Baker has been unstoppable the past few years. You know, like 38-game win streak, you know, for that and – uh, they uh, they lost to him fourteen to twelve, just a phenomenal game. But I think Northview has gotten even better as the 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 year has gone on. And of course, playing Jay, I think they'll beat Jay probably by a couple touchdowns. I just think that's going to be Northview's going to be a scary team to play because if they had to go play Baker, they've already proven that they can play with them. I think they're going to be out for blood this time. We better score on this drive. All right, let's get back to uh, as you can tell the. <laughs> This show on a Friday at six thirty, uh, the the we already got TV tape today, so I'm I'm like, uh, I, I UCF's think on against Tulsa on right here. We might need a transition. No, to no, the no, Patriots no. That's why something. I'm being quiet. But uh, all, all I'm saying is, um, if this gets picked, I, what a pop up! It should have been picked. It should have been picked. That he was didn't, disgusting. He didn't hit the triangle. What are they calling a flag for? There was three defenders on here. This is a breakdown of Tulsa UCF. So you guys might have to like shut my mic off if the, if he, if Gabriel's done. This guy, you know, he just throws pop ups. He does. That's the the, the <laughs> he was watching Philip Rivers last night. This is the <laughs> Philip Rivers. Oh no, no, he's this been doing that Phillip all Rivers. year long. He's not. see. Well, the thing is, a lot of people try to convince because a system or a guy's like it. Mackenzie Milton was a special player. Yeah, he was really special Fantastic. player. And. And once in a while, a guy comes around like that and makes everybody else better. But the UCF is exactly what they are without Mackenzie Milton. They're a seven and two. They'll finish the season nine and three and go to one of those bowls that nobody's heard of in, in Boca or something. Now, outside of the people that get a sweet tan, uh, what a terrible defense player. Uh, but uh, <laughs> just call him out. That's my son right now. I'm watching. How dare you? His name's Johnson. So anybody named Johnson right now, if you're related, no. Uh, looking at the uh, what's going on right now in the NFL. Is there any chance do you see what has a better chance for the ultimate letdown game? The Cincinnati Bengals now take on the Baltimore Ravens with Ryan Finley at quarterback. Ooh. Before you laugh. I'm glad I got the Ravens defense and draft kings. It could be the weak fellas. Or yep, the New Orleans Saints at home against the Atlanta Falcons. What could be a bigger letdown? I mean Who has one, a better chance to get upset? That could be a hawker pick if you want. No, no, th- I, no thanks. I, I, I think I think with the momentum the Miami has, this could be a really big trap game for them in Indianapolis. That's kind of uh, where I'm going. Yeah, uh, I, I, I mean think they, that's they a, may they may yeah, screw themselves I mean, they, out of the first pick. They they threw a Gatorade bath. I mean, oh my gosh, this he could fumbled be, at the one yard line. This could this could be a trap game for Miami. So Miami could be could be upset here. Yeah, just, Miami's on a hot no. streak. Look out. Well, like my dad says, it has to be more than one for it to be a streak. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I, w- I would say just because of the rivalry, probably Atlanta, uh, and then with yeah. them getting Matt Ryan back. Because think about it, the Saints are going against a former MVP, contrary to what I believe. I don't think he's an MVP. But uh, they're going against a former MVP, and then the Ravens are going against a fourth rounder who's obviously there to make sure the quarterback room is nice and toasty for Herbert or Tua. Point blank period. But the, the Falcons roster, like you said earlier, they're, they're just – 
better. Like, they should be able to compete. Now, the defense is atrocious, but still they should be able to put some points there. But, it, you know, you look at the Bengals, and goodness gracious, like, they're just – That's why oof. I'm calling for Zach Taylor's job. Yeah. Chad, do you want to yell touchdown nights? No, I don't. It, 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 it's embarrassing right there. Uh, they they – they fumbled the ball at the one yard line against Tulsa, who has given up on the season. The They're fumble was the best offensive play they've had. Well, no, no, the guy recovered the fo- football, and he like Dylan Gabriel, the quarterback, and he got up and he started celebrating at the one. It's first and goal at the one. He fumbled and he recovered it, and he was like, "I got it over you guys." He's like, he's all pump up music. I was like, "You, you should walk off the field if you." That's he's trying to have a very positive, infectious personality because on, unfortunately, with y'all losing two games, he's got to transmit some sort of positive energy. It was Chad. fun though, is we're all broadcast. Uh, we've all. You know, we're all professionals uh, today. I've gone off the track, but uh, we, we've all, you know, today. For, but you, <laughs> the one thing is we never really get to watch, like, our team with that. Like, I've never watched an Oregon Ducks game with Jeff. I've never – what team would be that for you if you had to pick one? I bet it would be – would it be – what would that team be for you? I, uh, it, 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 the, for football, it would be LSU. Yeah, well, I mean, but, I mean, I mean but it, it would be more NBA, though, about right? The, you would, the Denver yeah. Nuggets, right? I'd say the Nuggets, I, based on based on how you've talked about everything. Yeah, I'd say if like the Nuggets playoff game, if they were in, this would be the moment. Like if probably, yeah, okay, all right. No, I mean, they've treated me well. I've actually got to go in the locker room, okay. do the half court shot with them and stuff. So like, as the organization, they have treated me well to where there's actually like emotional ties with that. So I would say that would probably be it, especially with yeah, them I, never winning a championship. You know, it it means more too. You see, when he said that, he looked at me because he knows that as Oregon, we have not won a championship. Except no. for track and field. I don't know if he has. No, I, we've I, I, I probably looked more at <laughs> you because you would give me a little bit more sympathy than Chad. Yeah, Chad's Chad like, doesn't care. Chad's like, oh, well, uh, you should have been a Pats fan. We don't We don't have to win. We just claim. Yeah, we, we just, just but, have this fake trophy. But, yeah, I, I get very perturbed watching because – That's it, a good word. Thank you. Because it, well, UCF's way better than – I mean, they're – their athletes are ten times superior to Tulsa's, and and they're fumbling at the one. Let's move on. Easy this is, on the ten th- times. We've got LSU Alabama this <laughs> week. We got other things times. going on. Let's <laughs> twelve. All right. <laughs> Let's go to uh, some of the things going on right now in uh, in college football. All right. Uh, the other games going on. Florida State cash it or smash it. Let's get to this. Cash it or smash it. Florida State with the chance pretty much this week for a bowl bowl position if they want to play in it. Uh, do they go out and beat Boston College or two two point underdog? I think they rally for Odell and they get this one done. Uh, I, they play better for it doesn't get worse. I mean, it can't get worse. But Odell, they the last time Odell Higgins took over was as a head coach was the bowl game against Southern Miss, and you could see they they wanted to play for him. When he he is a he is a knoll. Uh, he's been yeah, a knoll from day one. He was a, he was a student there, so they love this guy. And they got Odell billboards like they spent money. <laughs> People are like, I'm not giving a dollar for this, but but they'll put buy billboards for him in town. Oh, they got Odell billboards in town. They're ready to go with him. And you know what? It's not going to salvage their season, but I think they go out and beat Boston. Boston College is they got a good run game, but they're not a good football team. And nobody, I'm telling you, nobody up there in Chestnut Hill is going to be up there like screaming for this. But who cares? Because the yeah. Patriots are still a play in. Yeah, exactly. Good, so you, you know, got they, Bruins games going on. They're not wasting money Celtics, to go to a Boston Kemba Boston Walker College game. Yeah, they, they, there's too much other stuff going on right now. Uh, unless this was like Patriot Day up there, they're, yeah, they're, they're not going to this game. So I, I don't have any confidence whatsoever in Florida. State. <laughs> no, I mean I'm, I'm not, just being I know, honest. I know. I, and and it hurts you shouldn't. Me. I know. And it hurts my heart. It really they're, does. Like whenever they're like, oh yeah, when did you uh, go to school and get your graduate degree at Florida State? I'm like, I was there for the Tiger years, baby. And, like, I'm probably going to get the, the job out of sympathy uh, just because they understood the pain that I had to go through. And they're going to say he has <laughs> mental toughness and tough skin. Bring him aboard. Yeah, I'm no, but I, I just have no confidence whatsoever in picking Florida State yeah. for anything. Now, ask me when we play Alabama State. Now, all of a sudden, I'm going to be uh, chest poked out and very confident. But I, against an actual team, I just can't see it. See, what I see is Boston College has, like, a physical demeanor. So if mm-hmm. they start, if they want it to play Smash Mouth, they could just – Well, Adazio like, does a really good no, job yeah. there. I mean, that, that's what he's built on. Like, he'll run through a wall himself. But the star athletes in the – they're not comparable. I mean, Florida State's got better athletes. Yeah, so, they're well, 12 Marvin times Wilson's better, out. right? I mean, with Wilson <laughs> – yeah. No, Marvin Wilson being out <laughs> now only seven. Seven, by the way. Um, you know, I'm just saying, if there is a uh, – when, when Florida State goes up against other teams, like bad teams, it's one thing. But uh, this game – Frankly, why are we even breaking this down? Who who knows? They're trying to get a coach. Let's go to our phone lines, 850-623-1330. Who do we got? This is uh, Jeff from uh, Pensacola. Um, I'm going to give a call on the Alabama game uh, and LSU. I think LSU went to game 45-10. to 10. 
I think they get that for tour. I think he had two pitch victories and, um, and stuff. And I think the Gators win them all. It'll be a close one, though. Um, I say it's uh, 25 to 15. Thank you, Chad. Go Tigers. Have a good day. Well, thank you for the Go Tigers. You might have saved by throwing them in there. Brittany I might be like watching and be like, did Chad just say that? All right. Then you give him like a, uh, I have, <laughs> no hunger I have man picked, for no, you tonight. I have picked Roll Tide. <laughs> I have picked Alabama to win this game. But uh, no, I, I look, Jeff, I, I like the positive the positive influence. I hope your vibes no 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 can be like sent to Because you do believe in that. No, I do not. No, you do believe in the positive vibes. That's why you want to go with Hornybrook over Blackman. Now you're going to act like yep. you forgot. No. no, yeah, wait, wait. That wasn't positive. That, that's called stats. That, 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 oh, I'm talking dear, about. Jesus. They were three and zero with him when I made that comment, and the other was one and four. That's what I was basing. Chad it looks on. at me like he points to me like, yeah, like I've come got on. a sword in my hand. It might be fake, but <laughs> you sack him. What is this clown doing? Okay, uh, you know what? So, um, so listen real, real quick, just just to get back to where we were. Florida State, I, I'm going to go ahead and just maybe bold, but I just think they're going to find a way to make a bowl game. I think they're going to win this week, and they're going to get destroyed by Florida. I think Florida, Florida State wins. I, I, I like if you're in Vegas or anywhere, I don't have the confidence meter, but Boston, <laughs> Florida State's a better football team. See, Miami has athletes. Miami has – when they go up against other athletes and teams that uh, like have discipline like Manny Diaz, like they, they're not going to win those games. But against games like Syracuse, against games like NC State where the athletes are not, you got these guys trying to run down Cam Akers and can't even, I mean, they try to make a move and you could just see the speed. They can't cut off the end. Like, Boston College has those athletes too. Did you say Miami and discipline in the same sentence? Were you saying well, they're Manny not Diaz, No, no, Manny Diaz okay. has, has installed more discipline lately. They're not used to it, but Diaz doesn't take the crap. Speaking of Florida State, I'm actually disappointed that they dropped their first basketball game against Pittsburgh because they should yeah, easily be going around a four or five seed. That's just what they're capable Wiseman of. Wiseman so. today, that was some bad news. That is bad news. It's bad news for Memphis. It's not bad news for Wiseman because the truth of the matter is he was a one-and-done player, so he doesn't have to go to jogging class and things like that to make, to make sure he's eligible for next semester. Penny Hardaway, that's his, his guy. Fun fact, he was actually supposed to go to Florida State, but blood's thicker than water, so that's why I went to Memphis. And Penny Hardaway has the resources to make sure that he's getting NBA ready, very similar to what LaMelo Ball's doing. So it's actually good for Wiseman. It's bad for Memphis because that was going to be the recruit that was going to put Memphis on the map with Penny Hardaway taking over as a first-year coach. But now he could just focus on the NBA draft. And whenever he played, he was 28-11. and 11. He yeah. had 20 points at halftime. So, I mean, he, he's going to go top five regardless. So it's good for him. Bad for Memphis. Yeah. Well, I I saw earlier on the little ticker below that they said that he could he could play. I, don't, I haven't heard. He's anything. playing tonight, but this is going to be his last That's two it. raw well, because gonna, they put a temporary out. order on it. You know, <laughs> over under fifty points for him tonight. This one game he's going to get. He's just going to really? show out. Penny Hardaway might play in the full forty. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's That'd no be point. hilarious. That would be funny. <laughs> this is by the way. Have you ever watched um, UCF? No. 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 The way the, oh. how quickly. The, I feel bad for these refs because they're not up to it, and it looks a little cold tonight. Like the tempo and the stuff? The tempo. Like, they yeah. get the ball, and they're, they're, they're like, telling the refs to hurry up. The guys are all set. <laughs> and the, the ref it's like the ref just fell, the middle ref, and he couldn't get it. It was like nobody nobody helped him. He he just went down. He knew he had no time. Phillip Rivers and, pass. Uh, okay, well, that well, <laughs> that's just that's all, that's all he does. And then Gabriel just throws it up in the air. Yeah, th- don't look at me. Yeah, he caught one. Congratulations. When he threw that it into was a quadruple. That was a design play. That was a pl- it's always a design play. 20 minutes ago, and we have the show's archive. <laughs> you just, like, just that throws it up. That's, and, now that, that, and now that he completed it, he's like, it's a design play. Train, they got good receivers. Let's go to break. We are like a break. Uh, let's get in the end zone. Because if they don't score this, they fumble this. Uh, Overrated. Touchdown. touchdown nights, folks. Everybody Overrated. cares. Overrated. Oh, for all those two Tulsa fans out there. <laughs> Overrated. You got good ribeyes, but you're not going to win this football game. Coming back for more right here on the Sports Show. Bowling is a sport that will last you a lifetime. And at Cordova Lanes on Airport Boulevard, every night there is something exciting happening. Like on Tuesday and Thursday, it's penny a pin. Bowl 100, pay a dollar. Or how about starting your weekend off right by reserving a lane for just $25 at Moonlight Bowling. Enjoy a fresh-made pizza and the lowest pitcher prices in Pensacola. So what are you waiting for? It's time to roll your way into Cordova Lanes and experience fun like never before. I'm really hungry, but I don't want to spend a fortune. Well, you're in luck. Now you can get Denny Super Slam with two eggs, two bacon strips, two sausage links, hash browns, and two pancakes, all for just $5.99. That is a great deal. So I get all of that for just $5.99? You sure do. Wow, this meal just keeps getting better and better. Some might say super. I see what you did there. 
the $5.99 Super Slam is back. See you at Denny's. Limited time only. Price and participation may vary. No substitutions. Gordon Auto Wholesale says yes. No credit, bad credit, bankruptcies, no problem. Over 250 vehicles in stock. Third row SUVs and trucks. Everyone's approved. Gordon Auto Wholesale is the bank and can help you get into a nice, clean vehicle. Carfax checked. Need a new car? Gordon Auto says yes. Can't buy one from the other dealers? Come see Gordon Auto Wholesale on Palafox just two blocks south of airport. Or call 479-9200. That's 479-9200. The Ice Flyers honor those who have served with their annual Veterans Appreciation Night Saturday, November 9th at 7 p.m. Veterans, active duty, and retired military service members will receive 35% off their entire party with their military ID. This discount is available in person at the box office and online at PensacolaIceFlyers.com slash vet tickets. That's 35% off with military ID at the Ice Flyers Veterans Appreciation Night on Saturday, November 9th at 7 p.m. Lefty Lucy, righty tighty. Okay, here's the thing about yellow snow. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? Learn how to drive, you moron! Remember, you're always teaching. Teach carefully. React with rage, and kids will learn it's okay to do the same. Keep your cool, and kids will do likewise. For advice, visit actagainstviolence.org. Brought to you by MetLife Foundation, National Association for the Education of Young Children, and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm Matt Kenseth. You don't have to be a race car driver to know that life can be full of drama. Some of it you can't control, like mechanical issues, high winds, and rain delays. But there's some drama you can skip. Skip the drama that comes with not having your high school diploma or equivalency. Find free adult education classes near you and finish your diploma. Visit finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. You just need to take that first step and find free classes near you and leave the drama for the racetrack. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ed Council. You're listening to Pensacola's local and ESPN Sports Station. Your favorite ESPN radio shows, plus high school and UWF Argo football. ESPN Pensacola, 1330. Sports Drive with you, ESPN Pensacola, 1330 AM, 99.1 FM. Eric Vadrain, DJing over there. We got... Chica, um, chica. <laughs> Remix! <laughs> no, I, I like to see your dance moves, and with it being the weekend, I thought oh, you were going to bust them out. Are. Oh, I, I actually told my wife, I was like, man, Chad, Chad got some moves. Silence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, that makes me I don't laugh. know why this took me to a moment at Church Tree Station in uh, Orlando when uh, they have a Club 23. It's where Tiger Woods <laughs> used some of his best clubs after midnight. But it was a <laughs> but Tiger Woods uh, Club 23 is like all the Magic players. Hito Turkoglu, he was fun to drink with, by the way. But um, they had all Turkish the guys. Guy. Up, yeah, he was up here. Like, he would get up there and man, he would. I mean, he would funnel stuff up there, and he's like, "You got like a day game tomorrow. It's Saturday." But he uh, he had the Sunday NBC <laughs> no. game of the week, and he's up there like, oh, like up there like making. But so Hito, but. Sorry, Hito. But all of the guys up there, um, it was a fun place to go. But to get up there, you sort of go like the back room. It was like, you know, the elevator with two sides, and you're always wondering that. At which the place. one's like, going to Like, why is that other side? I never get to go to that other right. side. And everyone's like, oh, it's just for laundry. <laughs> yeah, right. You've just never seen the other side. It's like rush so, hour. Yeah, exactly. Whenever it goes in there, and they go behind the restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> so we would go back in the back, and, and then there was another door with another bouncer. And he would just stand there at the door. But he all knew us, and, and we would go through. And But there was clearly this day, I had had a couple cervezas, so let's just put it that way, just a few. And there was yellow tape around the... Uh, Crime scene? No, yellow tape around oh, okay. the, the stairwell. <laughs> now, the stairwell, I'm thinking, okay, it's just paint. I'm good. I really don't care about these shoes anyway. So <laughs> you could see me doing that. You guys, I almost ate that, yeah. that coldies from uh, this afternoon that was sitting out all day. But the So I walk through there, and I'm like, I got this. So I take one step, and I'm with a group. But it wasn't the, – the caution tape wasn't for paint, clearly. It was because it was bad wood. And I took one step and went right through it. And it, shh, and it was about three stories. But I got lucky because it hit the one side, and I got lucky under the side, and it <laughs> hit my fall against the wall. And I went down there. And, uh, man, I, I definitely – I had a couple of fractures. But I remember – that moment right there is when you brought my dance moves. That's what I remember. I would go into the club because we were gonna go up there and have like a dance competition, have some fun. 
but my dance ended up being falling through three stories. Uh, so you yeah. had the limp. You could have done the stinky leg yeah, oh, if you remember nice. that. The that worst part been, too, the yeah, person that I am, the kindness that I am, I was more worried oh, about their stairwell. I really was. Like I was going to get in trouble for breaking their stairwell, and I'm like on the ground, like my legs in half. I'm like ah, like. But I was once again to go back to revert to the story, the original part. There was a couple cervezas in there, so I didn't feel the pain as much until the next. There day. you go. Yeah, there was yeah. So that's all. That's and all. I can actually see the Hidu Turkulu story because there are some times you're like, dear Jesus, like hit R2 and use the turbo, you <laughs> slow, big 610. He could stroke forward. it though from anywhere. Just oh, yeah, out the alcohol. But do you, like, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like, where it's just like sometimes you're like, are you on a lunch break? Like, dear <laughs> Jesus, like the, you, yeah. our fast breaks are turning into lunch breaks with yep. you pushing the ball at the court. You got to start and doing Hito, something. Which he's not listening right now, but if he was, he was like, why did I have anything to do with that story? And he's like, why was I thrown in there like drinking? <laughs> like it has nothing to do with you falling through the stairs. But it, it, the magic, and maybe it's because I covered the magic before I worked down here. I was with the Orlando, with ESPN Orlando, and we covered the magic and uh, did Dante Marcatelli and I actually did a show and now he's the uh, one of the guys in the booth with, uh, or he's one of the, he does the post game report and uh, Dante's a good guy. But he was, uh, they always had one big, slow, tall, 6'9 white guy that could shoot. The Magic have always had that. Ryan every Anderson. Thing, uh, uh, Pat Garrity. Yeah. Jeff yep. Turner. I mean, every year they always had a big, tall guy that could shoot from outside. Uh, B- Matt Bonner. I mean, they always, every year yeah. they had a guy that was that guy. And uh, I Turner hated Blue Matt Bonner because he was with the Spurs and I just despised <laughs> them. So, yeah. <laughs> they were always good, though, because once in a while they would, because they were born 6'10", 6'9", they would once in a while venture into the paint. <laughs> but they always wanted to lurk <laughs> and yeah. clap like the point guard. Well, it, they, they had a really good system going on there with Stan McGundy because they had basically Dwight Howard in and four out. Yeah. So God, he they, smelled like a laundromat, but oh yeah, I remember you telling me. Bad. But no, that that was like a perfect. If you think about it, that probably would have won a championship in today's NBA yeah. for sure because Rashard Lewis was shooting over forty, Turkoglu was shooting over forty, Bogans was shooting. I mean, like Jameer Nelson, everybody was was just stroking, and then you had just Dwight Howard whenever he was in his prime. So for Rashard Lewis, squad. it was just. <laughs> Let's just say what, what, what Richard wanted to show up that day. That's all I'm going to say on that one because there's a couple of days where I don't know if he knew what jersey he was putting on. But uh, Richard was a good player. I, 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 Richard was, but there was games where he was just lost. I mean, he would go to the corner and stand there, and we were like, "Dude, are you?" You know, he just it, players do that. Whatever. Yeah. Markel Fultz, I, I hope he does well. But you know, I'm watching the game the other day, and they they lose. Uh, Vucevic misses that open J, and they could have won against Dallas. And it's two seconds later, he's cracking up and like hugging and laughing, and I'm like. Can you at least get off camera before you do that for like the fan base? Like you just you were in a, like a hard fought battle and you miss it. And I, I get it. I John mean, Isaac balled out. Yeah, he's good. I mean, he's yeah. got he's got talent. I think they they have too too many bigs. Yeah. And what I mean by that is you drafted Mo Bamba six overall. You got yeah. John Isaac. You drafted him. I think it was six overall. You got Vucevic. You re-signed, and then you got Aaron Gordon. You got us. You got to start moving these pieces to get some better guard play, in my personal opinion. Yeah. Let's go ahead and uh, take a quick break. I realize what time it is, and then we'll get to our midseason awards. Jeff brings up an idea, and I'll just get into talk about falling through stairwells. We're coming back for more right here. It's the Sports Drive. Just felt there's a huge need in Pensacola to bring foot and ankle services, specifically orthopedic foot and ankle services, to this area. There's so much growth in Pensacola. I wanted a, a freestanding orthopedic foot and ankle center uh, to do this, and. As far as I can tell, this is the only one really in the country that's freestanding. Most orthopedic surgeons are part of a multi-specialty group. So we offer on-site x-rays, on-site CT scan, and on-site MRI. They can come to one place. Visit NielsenOrthopedics.com to reserve your appointment today. There's a lot going on right now, and broadcasters are on the ground covering all of it, bringing you the weather, the traffic, and breaking news, all while entertaining you 24 hours a day. Someone needs to tell you what's going on around the world and in our hometowns, and that someone is us. We are free radio. We are always there. We are broadcasters. Visit wearebroadcasters.com or text radio to 52886 to learn more. Furnished by NAB and this station. Saturdays are meant for sports, so Sports Call with Davis and Justin is here to kick off your sports weekend. College football, the NFL, the MLB, the NBA, the PGA Tour. If it's happening on Saturday, we're talking about it. Plus, weekly interviews with the players, coaches, and fellow journalists. Be a part of the show by calling or texting in at 623-1330. Sports Call with Davis and Justin every Saturday from 11 to 1 on ESPN Pensacola, 1330 AM, 991 FM. 
Hello, sports fans. Miles Bentley here, general manager at Hill Kelly Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Pensacola. Growing up, I always loved sports. Nothing but net. Out of the park. Through the uprights. Sink the puck, Bentley. That was me. But my love of the game couldn't beat my love for Pensacola and helping folks get on the road of dreams in a new Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. Sure, I never went to the big leagues in sport, but we're all pro here at Hill Kelly Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. Proud to be in Pensacola. ESPN Radio is taking over. ESPN News. You can now watch your favorite radio shows all in one place. From Golik and Wingo. <laughs> oh, yeah. To the Dan Levitard Show with Stugatz. All right, I'm available every day. Thanks. To the Stephen A. Smith Show. I just don't understand this guy. To the Will Kane Show. It's my job to tell the truth. From morning to night, the best of ESPN Radio is now available on ESPN News. ESPN Radio is taking over. ESPN News. You can now watch your favorite radio shows all in one place. From Golik and Wingo. <laughs> oh, yeah. To the Dan Levitard Show with Stugatz. All right, I'm available every day. Thanks. To the Stephen A. Smith Show. I just don't understand this guy. To the Will Kane Show. It's my job to tell the truth. From morning to night, the best of ESPN Radio is now available on ESPN News. Talk football every day with Pensacola's own Coach K. Credit a great, great performance by Garoppolo. And I love the way he throws the football. He's got all the things going for him. Every weekday, noon till 1 on ESPN Pensacola, 1330 FM 991. ESPN Pensacola is your home to UWF Argos football. Catch every game, home or away, on Pensacola's home for local sports. ESPN Pensacola, 1330 FM 99.1. You're listening to Pensacola's local and ESPN Sports Station, your favorite ESPN radio shows, plus high school and UWF Argo football. ESPN Pensacola, 1330. Scooch. 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 Yeah. Hey. You get the bag and fumble it. I get the bag and flip it and tumble it. Welcome back. Sports Drive with ESPN Pensacola, 1330 AM, 99 FM. We got about five minutes, so let's run through this. With my brain, that's almost impossible to run through a segment. But let's do this. Let's try. Uh, time to hang up the cleats, our midseason awards for football. So short answers, everybody. <laughs> I'm telling you guys that. Uh, time to hang up the cleats here. Uh, who out of these guys? Andy Dalton at 0-8, which he sort of has. I'm not on his own. Frank Gore, 11 carries, 15 yards in his 40s now. Last game against Washington, it looked bad. Pete Carroll, just because I don't like his shoes. And then Joe Flacco. Okay, uh, those are first? my choices. <laughs> Thinking. Uh, I, I mean, I've never been a Joe Flacco fan. I'm going to go with Joe Flacco just because I've seen Andy. Dunn. I'm a Joe Flacco fan because he's given the Patriots some tough times. But uh, I'll, I'll vote Joe Flacco. Now. Yeah, of course you would. Um, can I go Freddie Kitchens? <laughs> well... I know he's not on the list, but if he's wearing that's, that's cleats, other. if that's he's wearing other. cleats, that's also something where you would hope he, you know, you'd be like, that, that sounds like something from like Uncle Rico would do. Like he yeah. should be wearing cleats. He doesn't have to. No, I would say Frank Gore. Just don't wear cleats. Right? I would say I would make that good. I mean, I've never not? been a, a coach. Yeah, no, 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 coach. no, 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 no. I was gonna coach. say, yeah, yeah. yeah. Baseball, but baseball managers wear cleats. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> go. I'm gonna go Frank Gore just because they drafted the running back to replace him anyways, and he's getting old. He's gonna be a Hall of Famer anyway. Nothing yep. left to prove. Why not? 100. percent Best game this year: New Orleans, Houston, Week One in the Superdome, back and forth, classic. New England, Buffalo, that defensive grind where Buffalo got got a lot of credit for being out there, but it was a good, hard fought, old school battle. Yawn. The Giants and Bucks. I didn't just. This is on the list, by the way. He no, thinks I fine. just yelled at this. Uh, Daniel Jones coming back from down twenty-one, his first game as a rookie. I will and, uh, pass. And Kansas City, Minnesota, that back and forth. Bucker hits the twenty-six uh, last week. I'm going to go Saints and Texans. I was watching it live. You yep. saw two quarterbacks do what they do best. It was field goals. It was, goals. A fun game, it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, also totally. making this list. There hasn't been that like many thrilling games this year outside yeah. of that because that's. That's not the best list. There's some games like, you know, those incredible. All right. Uh, Russell Wilson, most important to his team's success. Couldn't do it without you. We know that, look, they went 5-0 and without Breeze. Brady, they've got a good enough defense they would find. If Garoppolo was in, they'd probably have the same record. No, no offense, but, I mean, based on, you know, if he was back there, he's not anymore. <laughs> All right. So most important to team success, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, Christian McCaffrey, or Jimmy Garoppolo? McCaffrey, especially without them not really having a, a legit quarterback. 
the the Seahawks can make it work with Chris Carson. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, mm, maybe so, probably, but they still got Aaron Jones. But really, all they got is Christian McCaffrey. He's like their best receiver and their best running back. So that's why. But I go they're with them. five and three, and really not. I mean, Seattle still. Well, imagine what they would be without. Yeah, that, that was my uh, thing. Is like exactly. McCaffrey has single handedly oh. won in those games. But exactly. And it, so if you want to argue with that, then Aaron Rodgers. I mean, yeah, you know, we've seen the script without Aaron Rodgers, and it's disgusting. The Brett Hundley. Yeah, I'm a Packers yeah, fan. Thank what, you. Like with Brett Hundley, they're unwatchable without him. So, I wish we I had mean, a perfect yeah. system to get Matt Castle like millions of dollars. I think but the whatever. records without Aaron Rodgers over the last couple of years is like. Uh, it's like one in seventeen or two. Aaron Rodgers is terrible. Aaron I mean, Rodgers yeah. there. Like, Sean yeah. Kaiser is gone too. So. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't Kaiser wasn't on a roll. Here, here is uh, this is though. Uh, I would say I'm going to go with Russell Wilson based on that. I've got the stats in front of me. So he's won a game by one point against Cincy, two points against Pittsburgh, one point against the Rams, four points against Cleveland, seven points against Atlanta, and four points against Tampa. Th- none of those teams are good teams, and without Russell Wilson. Those were probably all losses. Probably. So based, I mean, he's you know, my based, MVP yeah. right now. Yeah, uh, so uh, uh, that's the only reason. They would be 2-7 and seven pretty much without him. So I'm going to go this year, Russell. But, yeah, overall, I'd go with Rodgers on that. Moving here real quick, Big biggest disappointment overall, uh, Adam Gase just being, you know, just my everything My expectations with them. weren't high, so I can't be disappointed. But right. they picked up C.J. Mosley, Quinton Williams, Le'Veon Bell. They spent money. Still Adam Gase. All right. The Bears, 3-5 nah. and five in there. Baker Mayfield or Matt Ryan? And, or Matt the Atlanta Ryan. Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons. Uh, then the, the Falcons. Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, the Atlanta Falcons, for sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, you guys could have just sang, you know, done this. The, you you want to do finish the list? Yeah, sure. I'm just, all right, let's, uh, <laughs> let's go to this one right here. Uh, don't say a word award. Joe Flacco, Baker Mayfield, or John Gruden defending Vontez Perfect. Baker Mayfield. Yeah, Baker Mayfield. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> does too much talking as is. Yes. Coach of the year, Sean Payton, Mike, Kyle Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan. It's hard to go against Payton. And uh, best Patriot player. Nobody cares. Aaron Hernandez. <laughs> wow. Let's go, Knights. Guys, have a great rest of your night. You too, Jeff, buddy. Yep. Eric, thanks for joining me. It's been a lot of fun, everybody. Go Golden Hurricane. <laughs> the UWF Argos games and the big NFL games every Saturday and Sunday on Pensacola's home for hometown sports. ESPN Pensacola, 1330 AM, 991 FM. If you would like to be a part of ESPN Pensacola as a sponsor or promotional partner, just give us a call at 262-6000 or visit our website at ESPNPensacola.com. ESPN Pensacola, 1330 AM, 99.1 FM, WEBY, Milton, Pensacola. ESPN Radio Sports Center. I'm Steve Lennox, college basketball on ESPNU tonight at the half in Memphis. Number 14, Memphis Tigers up 47-16 on the University of Illinois, Chicago. Tigers 11 threes in the first 20 minutes, six from Boogie Ellis, who has a game-high 18. News breaking about 45 minutes prior to the game that Memphis freshman James Weisman was ruled ineligible by the NCAA roughly 30 minutes before the game started. Announced that Weisman would play after an emergency temporary restraining order was issued late in the day by the courts. Weisman's attorney saying in a news conference that head coach Penny Hardaway assisted Weisman and his family with a move to Memphis in 2017. NCAA Dean Hardaway as a booster at the time. Ohio State Buckeyes defensive end Chase Young not going to suit up and play Saturday against Maryland. School is investigating a possible NCAA issue from 2018. Young did tweet today that he accepted a loan from a family friend and is working with the school and the NCAA to be able to play. Again, ESPN NFL analyst Damian Woody today on the Will Kane Show. I just think the NCAA is this bunch of nonsense. It's like a it's like a cabal. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. The fact that this man got, you know, got a loan, paid it back, and now he has to sit out. Really? Like, come on, man! Like, as much money as the NCAA, like, much money as the NCAA and everybody's generating, and we're going to be concerned about that. And that's ESPN NFL analyst Damian Woody. It's unclear if Young will miss additional games behind beyond the Maryland contest Saturday. It's the battle for New York. The Giants and Jets. Coverage begins Sunday at noon Eastern on ESPN Radio. Presented by Vivid Seats.
Company on ESPN Radio and on the ESPN app. It's Spade and Company on this Friday on ESPN Radio, ESPN app, Sirius XM, Channel 80. In the home stretch, taking you into your weekend. A weekend full of big games, NFL, college, and otherwise. It's Sarah Spain, Jeff Dickerson. We're presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests join us on the show, Penzo Performance Line. And it's time for Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Uh, we're going to we're gonna talk about uh, this decision to bring back Patrick Mahomes, J.D., because uh, I understand both sides of it. I understand the idea that uh, they're, they're running out of time to create some separation to ensure that they've got home field advantage and they get a bye the first round of the playoffs. On the other hand, you want Patrick Mahomes at his very best at the end of the season, not in the middle of the season against the Titans. This could be, not being a doctor here, but this could be a situation, Sarah, <laughs> where they say, look, there's always going to be a chance this year, no matter when he comes back, that the knee could go out again. It could happen. But the risk really doesn't keep going down the longer you hold him out. I'm wondering if that's what's going on here because he was right. cleared to practice. He was cleared to play. They're not going to jeopardize the future of the franchise here, but it is an important time for them to get some wins with the Raiders kind of hot on their tail at 5-4 and four after beating Los Angeles last night. So I get it. And let's not forget this, too. When the starting quarterback is the reigning league MVP, Sarah, and he tells you, I'm good to go, I want to play, it's very hard for any coach, even Andy Reid, to say no. I mean, when the guy wants to go and he feels good to go and he's been practicing and there have been no setbacks and the doctors say he can play, more times than not, that guy is going to play. Yeah, and, and let's say we accept that he is good. 100% feels great. The risk is the same now as it would be later on. To what do you attribute the struggles that the Chiefs had, even when he was healthy, in ways that maybe we didn't expect? This kind of felt like a, a team of world beaters after last mm -hmm. year. It hasn't been as smooth sailing as maybe we thought. Hey, the league always adjusts. And we know that in Chicago, right? Oh, I mean, first hand. Hoping to but avoid now, it for a whole segment. But you're talking about a different caliber of quarterback right. here. I mean, you're yeah. talking about Patrick Mahomes, not Mitchell Trubisky. I mean, Patrick Mahomes is in a completely different level. He still had a very good year, but defenses know him better. They do things better to take it away from him. And now, you know, the league is about adjusting and then readjusting. I, I think the Chiefs will still be fine. I think the Raiders thing is interesting. You know, I did not expect it whatsoever. I think a lot of people felt that maybe the Chargers, after winning, what, 12 games last year, might take a step back this season. But they've got some legit competition. So it'll be interesting to see what happens if they get the win this week. Then they've got the Chargers, Raiders, Patriots. That's the meat of their schedule. They'll beat the Bears in Week 16, obviously, in Chicago. But the meat of their schedule is coming up, and I think that's why, in their minds, if the doctors say Mahomes can go, if he says he can go, it's go time. And that's why he's going to be out there this weekend. It's Spain and Company, Sarah Spain, Jeff Dickerson. Uh, the ESPN uh, NFL Next Gen stats have Mahomes leading the NFL with 16 touchdown passes when he's throwing on the run since the start of last season. That's four more than anyone else in the NFL. The next closest, Russell Wilson, even with the games that he's missed. Obviously, mobility, a huge part of his game. We don't talk about Mahomes as a running quarterback per se, but he uses his body and gets himself in position to make some of those freakishly great throws that we see. Um, and I'm curious to see what kind of Mahomes we get this weekend against the Titans. I anticipate that he will be someone who doesn't want to take any steps back, doesn't want to put himself on any sort of restrictions, just go out there and get a feel for it. Uh, but will that kneecap have him slowed down at all? Will that change the way he sort of approaches his attack at all, I wonder? I, I don't think so. I, I don't think that you can call plays like that. I mean, again, when a, when a head coach is told that this guy is ready to go, now you might occasionally scale it back a little bit, but you can't radically alter your, your offense. The offense is what the offense is. I mean, this is what they're going to do. They're going to have him run out. He's going to sprint out. He's going to do the Patrick Mahomes things. So I, you can't be afraid to put him out there. You can't play, like, scared that he's going to take a hit yeah. and the knee's going to go again because you know what, Sarah? If you are really that concerned, 
that if he takes that one hit or takes a too many hits on Sunday, that he's going to suffer a season-ending injury, then it's not time to put yeah, him back out there be yet. out there. Yeah, right. absolutely. It's Sarah Spain, Jeff Dickerson. We're presented by Progressive Insurance. Uh, I would say that's one to watch this week, even though the Titans aren't exactly blowing the doors off the place. Obviously, we want to keep an eye on Mahomes and how they look. The two most notable games this weekend, Vikings, Cowboys, and Seahawks, Niners. Let's start with Seahawks, Niners. That's the Monday night game. Um, this is fascinating to me because we just got past looking at a 49ers team where we said, okay, is this defense great or have they played, you know, teams that aren't as good? Uh, you know, we, we finally saw Garoppolo have to sort of step up and be the guy recently when it wasn't just left to the defense to hold things together. And they're facing likely MVP in Russell Wilson. This should be a good one. Uh, yeah, and they can't control who they play. You know that. I mean, they beat the Rams right. on the road. That was a big win. Um, it, it, now it's going to be more difficult with the Seahawks. They've got the Packers later on. They've got the Ravens. They've got the Saints. Uh, they got the Rams again at home. They got the Seahawks. It's going to be tough to close it out. But just watching the way that Jimmy G made those big plays, Sarah, late in that Cardinals game, that's money. That's on the road. Hey, Arizona's not as bad as people thought this year. They're a tough team. Mm -hmm. They fought really hard, and, and Garoppolo just made those plays late in the game on third down when he had to make them. Now, it hurts that Robbie Gold might not play on Monday night. I know he's not having a great year for them, but still going into a Monday night game without you know one of the best kickers all time is problematic. The defense is for real. At some point, they will, they will level back down to earth a little bit, but Sarah, they've got eight wins. Yeah. Eight well, wins. they might also be without uh, George Kittle. He, he 